Chicklets fans, huge announcement. We have all new merchandise available right now on barstoolsports.com slash chicklets. We have nice UNR sweaters like that. Plenty of brand new gorgeous merchandise. Check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 408 of Spittin' Chicklets presented by Pink Whitney. From our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. What is up, gang? Two weeks out from NHL action. Camps have opened. All kinds of stuff going on. We'll get to that shortly. Let's check in with the fellas first. We're going overseas across the pond. Mr. Fire himself, Matt Murley, 12 in a row last week. Wildly oh, impressive. Oh, my. How you doing? Scorching. Oh. He's heating up. Wow. That was a run. I'd, I've never been on a run that big, that many in a row. It felt like I was in a playoff series when I played like in the AHL where I, I wasn't changing my underwear. I wasn't changing what I was eating. <laughs> I was afraid how to put the bed in a tweet or a video. It was amazing. Everybody made a ton of cash. It was Besides a time. You, but Merles, we have spent a lot of time gambling together. That was out of this world. I just kept, I'm like, oh my God. Like, and they were, some of them were hitting late in the third period. Looked like a loss. All of a sudden it switches in like eight minutes. Just you, your video of the final, the one that actually lost, you could tell, I was like, this guy's been building and building. He might never lose again. But in the end, it had to come, it had to come down to a Th- That's how it felt. As they go down, th- they're down three, one with other under like eight minutes to play. I'm like, oh, it's finally over. Nope. Boom, boom, boom. We're tied up. Like, I, holy cow, we dodge a bullet killing a penalty in OT, but the shootout got us and it ended. And I, I was just happy it came during Merch of Palooza for Barstool because I had everybody going, like, buy the merch. I'll keep giving the winners. And uh, I was carrying the flag for us for a while, made it to the top 10, and I just got bounced today, though. So, Merles, we have to give a little bit of context to the fans who are listening, who are not on Instagram, Twitter, and following the EBR crew. Uh, You've specialized in European gambling, more so the Swedish Elite League, or is it also branch off into Germany and other countries? Yeah, I I like the Swedish League the best, but we'll hit Germany, we'll hit Austria. I had my game of the month where I had the boots on the ground for the SHL. It was Tim. You were in attendance. In attendance, he's got a Here. media pass. I Look think. at this. Got it. They <laughs> gave me a me- they, they gave me a media pass. Um, is that a pass down to the like, ref? Why room? is this guy in the media room? Shit face. Is that a Pasha up, pass or they, a legit pass? Hook me up with the hat, Tim or I K. So. Beautiful, oh, beautiful logo. Lit. It's uh, where no, Henrik no, no, Zetterberg played Elias Pettersson. So and and they club. are in the SHL now. When I was over there, I believe they were in the second division. They're now in the SHL. They're back in. And the barn was buzzing. I mean, your videos, that put, what an atmosphere. Yeah, it was amazing. It was, it's always like that. Good? Yeah, they're going to be really good this year. Your buddy oh. Lander's back in town. They got okay. Darlene from San Jose. Um, two other guys that normally would play in the KHL are back because the Swedish Hockey Federation, if you play in KHL, you're not allowed to play national team. So, and you know. M- Merles, I, I guess since you're so much more involved in the podcast now throughout the season, can we get updates to what's going on in the Swedish league? Maybe some prospects who are a little bit underage, who have maybe been undrafted so far, who might end up coming over here and lighting it up. And maybe even some of the, like, is there any Swedish gossip going on? Like, are, <laughs> like who are the, the the stars of the league? Like, is anybody pounding anyone's wife? I know there was a, a rugby story that came out with the, the guy walked in and, and the, the one guy, the one guy's getting a blowjob, his teammate's getting a blowjob from the guy's old lady. Like, any Ooh. drama going on over there? Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll get my ear to the ground. I'm gonna. It's gonna make me have to go out though. You know, I was off the sauce for 28 days. That's and, amazing. Uh, Wow. So that's good. How I'm much weight get, you I can, lose? I can have, no, I just eat a bunch of chips and ice cream instead. <laughs> <laughs> just, I heard there's a kid going to go off. top five. I heard there's a kid on Orobo that's going to go top five this year. All right. I'll check him out. I, I, I got the season pass now, media, so. Merles, I'll, I'll go to every game I can. Merles, and... you haven't been scouting at all. You're just you're, you're just so solely focused on the gambling lines. Um, this this well, For that game, I was just strictly watching the game. That was just. I need to win. And it was, I think that was number 11 in a row was that game. So I was just focused on the win, but I I've given you, I remember telling you guys about Elias Pettersson, I think before he got drafted and way back when I gave with yep. that one, he brought on the podcast. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to ride that one home. eh? still after, <laughs> after what, six years, you're ride that been? one till well, the guys well, back what, in the SHL yeah. in 15 years playing there again. 
Well, that's the joke they make about the Detroit Red Wings scout that found Zetterberg in the seventh or eighth round. He still has a job just because of that one pick. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, did You're you go tw- chips with him in, in, well, in the media yeah. lounge. <laughs> didn't you go 12-0 and 0 at an empty net with three seconds left in the game? Isn't that how you got the 12-0? and 0? Yep, yeah, that was Friday night in Germany. The guy was, Incredible. and he was laying on the ice like that one Ovechkin shot and like, and he just he hit it on the ice. That was a wild one. I was yeah. going nuts in my room. Well, uh, when yeah. the horseshoe's up your ass, it's yeah. up your ass. Congrats mm-hmm. on a great one. We'll get another one going. Producer, Mikey Grinelli, what have you been up to since we last spoke? Uh, I actually hit Rolling Loud this weekend with Pasha and Handsome Hank from Pardon My Take. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, Rolling Loud is probably the biggest hip-hop festival in North America. Uh, not the biggest rap guy myself, so I felt a bit out of place. Uh, great show. I did have to listen to that moron Pasha talk about how bright the devil's future is the oh, entire time. So that part quit. sucked. But overall, 10 out of 10 weekend. Uh, uh, who who I, were the rappers? I, I, I have to say, sorry, Biz. I have to say, I've only been, I think, maybe one or two rap concerts in my life. I, I think it's more of a kind of hit when it's produced and actually done in a studio. Because for me, the live version of rap was like, I don't know about now this. You're going to the wrong shows really because so never, I, I would but i will agree with you where there are not many rappers that are good at performing live it's a select few you just have to go to the right shows definitely right? Okay, who you go, uh j cole j. J. Cole's on lamar rim. uh obviously jay-z uh obviously kanye as far as production I don't necessarily like a ton of the new stuff like he's got some good beats and in, in certain things but he was obviously one of those guys um, I can't really think of anyone else off the top of my head. I went to Smoke and Grooves when I was 17. It was like, oh, <laughs> who was in blunts? that already? What was uh, it? I, I was, were you smoking blunts? Uh, with no, the boys back I never, then? never touched the stuff. At that I, I honestly so I don't remember making it. Yeah, to yeah, the Chingy was probably hockey, the headliner. Right? I, I've been to two rap. I think two rap concerts my whole life. I'll give you a, I'll give you a hundred dollars. If you guess who sang three. insane to the membrane. Oh, Cypress Hill. They were in there. They, they were at the no place. Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shit. All right. I would guess. Uh, We're going about 30 plus year, 30, 32 years ago. Run DMC. No, good guess. Um, Uh, Hold on. 30 years ago, rap concert. Yeah, it was a very uh, crossover artist. You might say that's my way of saying the audience was largely white people at the West Centrum in 1990 when I went. So, oh, Marky Mark. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) Beastie Beastie Boys. I I saw them in 92. The Wow. That was unbelievable. They started playing their first instruments. That was the second rap show. I went to the first one. Here comes a hammer. Uh-uh, uh, MC uh, Hammer. I, I was going to say oh MC. My God. Yeah. I, saw I was going to say because his pants, like you still wear the MC uh-huh. Hammer pants. Yeah, that's because <laughs> like, makes sense. That's because I get fucking 3XL fucking sweatpants sent to me from Kelly, <laughs> but the chip is closed. But I you saw do MC, wear the hammer. MC Hammer pants. Dude, it was, I mean, it was a hell of a show. He, I mean, he was king for a while because he was a first real big crossover rap artist. They kind of that harmless rap that you know, suburban America liked. So I went to the concert and it was largely a white crowd. Unreal. Right back then. Robert Parrish was in a box from the Celtics back then. But yeah, two rap shows I've seen in, in my life. But Biz, Biz to answer man. your question to, to the two headliners for that night was ASAP Rocky and Lil okay. Baby. Lil Baby was pretty sick. He was pretty awesome. <laughs> Just got to put an L.I.L. Yeah, I don't, I don't listen in. to Lil Baby, but he's, 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 he brings a lot of energy. So the crowd gets into it. How was ASAP Rocky live? ASAP showed up 25 minutes late, cool. then got the then possible. he got shut down and then, then he ate Rihanna's loud. on stage. And then basically, what? yeah, he had all of his boys on stage, showed up a half hour late, blames Rolling Loud for kicking him off stage. And I'm sitting there with the owners of Rolling Loud and they're like, what the fuck? This guy just showed up a half hour late. Why did they boot him for- off? Because his time was over because he was. No, late. He, yeah. no, he lied about it. They weren't even <laughs> booting him off. <laughs> Yeah. What a what veteran mean? move! He's like, they're kicking no. him off here thirty minutes early. What the heck? I see the owner's like, dude, no, stay, play. He's like, oh no, you're kicking me off. You texted me. <laughs> That's bullshit. I mean, Those no, guys, no, they what show you, up late. Nah, he's, he's a rock artist. Like, he's show with up Rihanna on time, now, bro. Nah, he's with Rihanna. He can do whatever he wants. That's no. Just I'm not Super even Bowl. talking about rappers. Any single artist, like, just show up on time. You're making big money. All right, I think you've said this. These people are here to see you perform. Don't be an asshole and be an hour late or whatever. All right. Yeah. You like being like a, a, a 10 or 15 minute doll, uh, minute uh, tickle, little ball tickle, teasy a little bit. 15 minutes is the right amount of time to juice the crowd up. Yeah, that's okay because you get fired up. 
Yeah, a couple of minutes. Like uh, Guns N' Roses used to be famous for that too. They'd come out an hour and a half, two hours late. Axel Rose just being an egomaniac asshole. They'd start riot and shit. But yeah, I mean, anything more than a half hour is kind of a box. You know, people. Well, Andy was smoking drugs with you outside the garden probably before the show. <laughs> I, I wish. I'd like hey, to get some uh, we we haven't. I mean, we we got together last week, but before that, so much had happened. And one of the things now talking about music, I just thought of is, did you see the video? of um the drummer from Foo Fighters who died Taylor Hawkins his mm-hmm, son yeah. Oliver played the drums for him Incredible. if anyone hasn't seen it no if you know Foo Fighters or not check this kid out unbelievable performance one of the coolest videos I've ever seen to sh- step in there at 16 years old and play like your father did that was a really cool music story that just popped into my head did did, did he did he fill in for him with the Foo Fighters yes yes wow. the, like a whole show the whole I don't know if it was just a song or the whole show. I think it was just one song. Yeah, no, I'll check. He came that. on for my other. hero. He came on uh, for the song My Hero. Dude, and it was his amazing. dad's tribute concert. Uh, oh wow. And uh also too, same show with um Dave Grohl. I mean, he's a great guy, man. Every every you don't hear anything bad about this guy. He brought out Wolfgang Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen's son. Of course, he died yeah. a couple of years ago to play his his old man. He was shredded just like his old man, and also That's he brought great. This like she's like an 11 or 12 year old black girl, Nandy Bouchel. She's a self-taught drummer. He started like a friendship with her. He brought her out. This girl is like fucking uh, Keith Moon out there. She just fucking shreds the drums. Unbelievable performance. So that's good. This it's was on all at the same show. All at the same show. Yeah. He just brought a bunch of collective people oh, together. That's... It was a tribute. And yeah, real hot woman show. I th- I believe it's on Hulu if you wanted to watch it in its entirety. But yeah, he's a, he good seems call. like a very solid person, that Dave Grohl. And yeah. he seems pretty funny, too. I had no idea prior to a few years ago that he was the drummer in Nirvana. Yeah, as yeah, well. I so found that like, out late too. I was yeah, late to that the was, party. That, on that was a one. late one. I was like, "Oh, yeah. who's this stud? You know, he just got into music." Yeah, sure. <laughs> hot, hot new rapper out of the Southwest, Lil Biz. What are you up to, Biz? <laughs> What's going on with you? <laughs> no, I just enjoyed my last full day of vacation yesterday in Victoria. Just been. Uh, I told you guys I pulled the back, doing a lot of yoga stretching by myself in the parks around here. Just cruise doing around my dead bike. Bugs? You just doing be, any dead bugs? Being a, just, just being a complete granola. Uh, dead bugs are the ones where you what? Uh, oh, yes. When you activate the core the other way, one yeah, hand so you and the right arm, left leg, and then the yep. left arm and the right leg are holding the the ball, the big bouncy ball, and then you're just... And then on the other hands, you you push towards the ball to activate that yes, side of the yes. core. The yeah, knee and the hand Those... are going hard towards the ball, and then the, the other leg and the arm are just stretching, and it's just so good for the core. So with, what I'm starting to realize is my brain um, thinks that I can just hop back what into brain? it. <laughs> the half of the brain. I that know will, what you mean, though. I know you, you by cannot. Jer- by, by Jeremy Oblonsky, the half that's still good. Uh, I, I try to just get right back into it every day, high intense, like load the legs, like the mind works, but the body won't work to that capacity anymore. So I think that I have to incorporate a lot more just like movement, yoga, Pilates, then and, and go hard, that, then, then you can maybe get to the, to the fun exercises, like the curls or, or you know, the, the big muscle group. So I got to kind of reshape my way of thinking and, and slow it all down. But the good news is, is I've been getting a ton of treatment here. I know that you're a big chiropractor guy. So I've been yeah, going to the chiropractor, treatment. ART, getting a little bit of massage. Uh, uh, did I say acupuncture already? I, I uh, Acupuncture so. I've done. It just doesn't. I, I get It hurts a little bit, and it's just scary to me, and needles, and I'm just afraid to move it all when they're in me. But people swear by it. People swear by it. I'm just not an acupuncture guy. Well, all right. I will say, like, since we started the break, you fucking transformation wise, you look unreal. What the fuck you got going on with your routine? Uh, I know I just joked about it before, but yeah, I, I kind of had an unwitting weight loss routine. I didn't I can't say I exercise went to the gym. I just, uh, you know, went laugh before, but I kind of had, you know, stressful few months and a uh, silver lining to that was losing some weight. So I'm not going to sit here and say I went to the gym or joined the gym. But once I lost that, I've been making a concerted effort to keep it off. I don't eat as much junk buddy. food. I don't, really don't drink R. soda. R.A. Goggins. Just, you know, <laughs> like it's easy. It's easy. Like there's no mystery about it. Like people are this diet, that diet. Like my mother's been a fitness nut since the seventies. It's real simple. Get some exercise in and don't eat like shit. And you know, once you get it off, it's just a matter of keeping it off. So if you're you know, older, I mean, not you, like anyone, if you walked two miles a it. day, that's it, man. It really, literally, that so could much. be like the difference in just feeling a little bit better. Legitimately like, throwing the air, throwing the, the headphones. And I should probably be doing a little more than that. But I'm still I'm a walker. I'm a all young right, get walker. The, get the ankle weights on there and yeah, shit. 
Fuck, man. Oh, I'm tank tops buzzing I'll around in uh, Charlestown. No. Uh, also, Biz, I did laugh or it, it, when you said that in my head. I had a buddy. Uh, he's a little. He was a little heavy at the time, and he went to see the doctor. Said, you got to start working out. And he's like, okay, yeah, I think I might do Orange Theory. And he's like, no, 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 no hold on. You Fuck can't Orange just theory. jump, jump in to work out. He's like, where you're at right now? You got to just maybe walk for a couple of weeks. Don't even think about trying to work out yet. He's like, oh, that's not good. That is not good. So I know what you're saying. You can't really hop into things because next thing you know, you pull a muscle and then you can't work out at all for two weeks. Yeah. And then you and, fall off your bike and uh, you got no hands for two weeks. And I know you sweat more running, but like, I, I think it's almost as equal. If you run two miles or walk two miles, you're still getting that same <laughs> exercise. And you're not, no, you're not butchering your knees to something like okay. the old fucking time to move on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Actually, I don't, if I don't you either. smoke a bowl and yeah. a, eat a uh, bag of potato chips on this couch, it's nah. basically like the same thing as doing an Iron Man. Nah, man. I, that's if, if your heart rate right. gets as high walking as it does running, you got serious issues. <laughs> if you no, have a giant like ice cream Sunday, it's like deck. going to the Navy SEALs. Oh, same yeah, yeah. <laughs> My puffs have gone way down. Last but not least, the Wit Dog, Ryan Whitney. What have you been up to since we last met? Not much. I had a I had a fantastic weekend. Um, I got to meet my nephew Liam, my brother Sean, and his wife Casey's uh, firstborn son. And I had met yes. him. He was born in July or June, actually June seventeenth. So six one seven is his birthday, which people Bunker Hill Day, maybe. I don't. I, although we were seven eight one growing up in Situate, but still Boston is six one seven. Um, it was it was a, it was a treat. We went over to Nantucket, which I absolutely love it over there. I called Biz Saturday afternoon. It was just it's like God's country to me. Sean Horkoff, actually, my good buddy, he works for the Red Wings now. He bought the house or he bought a house. I bought the house right next door to him. So it's just a fantastic place. And the best time of year to go over there is is like right now. Uh, it's not as crazy as July and August, and the weather's still beautiful. We got to play Sankity Golf Club, which is. Probably if I could join any course in the world, it would be this place. I think there's like a 25-year wait list, and you got to know a lot of people, so I'll never get in. But I got to play it. My brother took me down. It was a hell of a day, though, out there. We had a blast. And then I took the ferry home last night. It was funny, though, meeting his son, um, Wyatt, our youngest, is a lunatic. Looney Tunes. And he's he sees Liam, and he's just standing over him. Wyatt turns two in, in um, two months, just about. And he's standing over him. I'm like, oh, boy, oh, boy. And he's just like, boom, punch him no. in the face. I'm like, oh, growing him. sweet, Holy dude. Shit. Wyatt, relax. Because then, and then my mother was holding her other grandson, Liam, and Wyatt's like, what the fuck you doing holding that? Boom, punches him again. Jealousy? Like, oh, yeah. He was just like, why is Susie holding Liam? Like, this kid, this isn't me. Like, hold me. But... Um, that's cause that's cousin, you know, that's tough love as you're going to get from your cousin. So we have my other brother Colin's wedding this weekend. So it's just an awesome time right now in our lives. Uh, I'm very, very, very fortunate to have the family I have to have this chicklets crew family that I have. And this weekend to see, uh, our middle brother Colin get married. It'll be unbelievable. Now, Sean and I have to do the speech. Colin and I did Sean's best man speech oh, together. That's... We crushed it. We crushed it. But Colin was very good at remembering so many stories. And then, like, we both presented it well. I talked to Sean yesterday. What do we got for Colin? He's like, I don't, I don't know. So we've got to really rack our brains oh, to remember God. some funny moments. A lot of the things Colin have done, they're just classic. I don't want to rip on him the entire speech, though, right? We can't talk about all the things, times he fell asleep in the shower and I was trying to get him to go to school. But nonetheless, it's going to be a hell of a weekend. So. I'm in a phenomenal mood and hockey starting has really brightened my spirits because now with the camp stories out and about and the clips of preseason hockey already, which is wild that last night I turned on the TV and Edmonton's playing. I mean, yeah, Edmonton's playing Winnipeg. I'm like, what is going on? But we're, we, we're back. We're back. Yeah, absolutely. How, we're back. how would, uh, how would you like punish Wyatt in that instance when he, so punches he's so young, you keep, you go, no gentle, gentle and i kind of like <laughs> like i go gentle buddy gentle and then he kind of will be gentle to me but then he'll take a fucking book and treat it like a spear and like put it in my chest like when i'm <laughs> sleeping so i don't know exactly how we're gonna work with the gentle part um future and it's a maybe. job it's a job it's a full-time job parent to biz i don't know if you know you people know are like that. what do you do dude what do you do yeah. i'm like i parent i fucking parent <laughs> that's morals yeah Merle's home how, dad. Merle's, how would you have handled the situation? Same thing, gentle, yeah, gentle. Yeah, baby, baby, gentle, gentle. But ours is we're in the trying to do the timeouts now. When she knows she, and she she it gives you work. the look. No, she knows when she's not supposed to do something. She gives you that look. 
and uh, a timeout, and then she comes out and she just does it again anyway. <laughs> So the time yeah. aren't working. You have to get, yeah. give her a couple games. My sussy. wife's always like, yeah. you're in a power struggle with a two and a four-year-old, Ryan. You understand? I'm like, okay, and? <laughs> like, it's a battle getting them works. to brush their teeth, Biz. It's like 20 minutes to get her to come over and brush her teeth. It's, Imagine Biz trying to do it. Well, the other times is Merle's, Merle's, he, he should probably be disciplining his daughter occasionally, but, you know, there's seven seconds left in the Bills-Dolphins <laughs> game. He's like, he's hold like, on. He's like, hold honey, on. honey, honey. I got 10 in a row in the Swedish league. You think I'm fucking changing a diaper? Yeah. Okay. Here, peels, peels off a couple hundo. Uh, sorry, honey. I had 23 drinks the night this streak started. I have to do it every night. Yeah. Yeah. The maid, the maid will take care of it. There you go, sweetheart. Here you go. Here you go. Another big thing that happened since the last time we met, a sandbag had dropped. You guys versus Kyle Oposo and Matt Molson were real in Buffalo. What was the final result of that, man? That was a bond burn, a little nail biter action. It was four in a row, and it was biz. I, I mean, it's zero dark 30s, what he called it. I was calling him Zen Master Biz, but he hit a shot into the 17th hole, which he wanted to hit a nine iron from 120. I, I asked him to hit the, the 50 degree. He We settled on pitching wedge. Hits a beautiful shot. Two putts it for four or three. Oposo had a had a legitimate look to, to, to force you to make it to continue the match. Just missed. And then he didn't say a word to me for the next 25 minutes. It felt like we had to win the 18th hole with Biz, another four for three. And then we go down and I make birdie from off the planet on the 18th hole for the win with a planned celebration to Biz. I mean, I hate to give away the video. I think if you haven't watched it, maybe go check it out. We'd really appreciate it. But that was a hell of an effort by you. And you went legitimately insane. You kind of lost your mind while also... I did lose my mind. While also gaining like... What's the word? Uh, true. What's like a what's like a deep word to describe how you <laughs> felt about yourself? I don't know. You know I'm, saying? All right. I'm not the word it's guy. Like here. Con- like confident inner confidence. It just inner confidence like would zone. work. He was like, yeah, it was like a Buddha almost. I, I just got fed up with being dog shit. You saved us on the front nine. And yeah, you were I, good the whole back nine. You got drunk, too. That's the thing. I needed to recalibrate. And sometimes when your golf game shit. You kept telling me, Grinelli kept telling me, he's like, you just got to keep boozing until you get it. There was a couple other uh, narcotics involved as well. We got to keep those off camera. I had to chug. Oh, I, I kind of didn't have to. I wanted to chug a beer with that police officer that we met on the course. Yeah. I think that that was one of the turning points of the match. But overall, man, just had a little bit of everything. We are going to incorporate more of, of uh, uh, they brought their kids out to play us on a hole. And the I kids know a were- lot of people were, were mentioning you guys, you guys won a hole against we their fucking kids. speed bags. Uh, yeah, kids. yeah, we did, buddy. <laughs> we fucking did. And we we took the point and ran. I think that they thought that that was going to be a layup. That was to me one of the bigger turning points in the match, beating the kids. But if you haven't checked that out, uh, brought to you by Peter Millar. We got an ad in the podcast actually coming up here. Unbelievable golf brand, uh, very breathable stuff. We are decked out in Peter Millar. We got to thank them. We got to thank Pasha uh, and all the other people who helped us record. And it's Brookfield Country Club wit. Yep. Gorgeous. That's course. Correct. So thank you to them for taking care of us and allowing us access. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. Maddie Molson, now a scout with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Oposo, obviously uh, going to be with that Buffalo team this year. Big expectations coming in. Not the way they wanted to start the year. But uh, four in a row for the good guys here. Four in a row, Wit. That's our that's our tied for our longest win streak in Sandbagger history. Let's try to go on a Merley like streak. Yeah. Uh oh. I love uh, the um, the Mario power up sign every time somebody did a pink yeah. Whitney. That nip. was great. Yeah. That was a good edit. Did it? Yeah, that was comical. Uh, also, Biz, we want to thank the people who bought up the remaining tickets for our live show in Pittsburgh on Friday, October fourteenth. Thanks to everybody who bought the rest of those up. We cannot wait for that. Uh, also. Two weeks till another season, as I mentioned. So make sure you load it up on the old pink Whitney, the five times distilled vodka infused with fresh pink lemonade flavor. Merles, you're a big pink pink Whitney guy. Tell us what you like the most about pink Whitney. The pink Whitney. I like it because it's always free when we're on the trips and I'm around. <laughs> That's, Whitney. That's, good. That's, That's good. number Great. one. Well. Well. <laughs> but uh, I'm like you. I like mixing it with the seltzer water. It's, it's just the perfect summer drink. Hockey season coming around. I like to do the nips a little more during the hockey season, quick bangers, and then have some big deal brewing as my uh, chaser with them. A little chaser. Ooh, there we go. I can recalibrate you on a golf course, too. That's what I was drinking in that video. 
And that's, oh, uh, that's okay. what got the job done. And wait, I just feel like when I slowed the heart rate down towards the end and didn't talk to anybody and didn't concentrate on anything other than my shots, golf's an easy game. Yeah, it's so easy. It's n <laughs> no problem at all playing golf game. to a high level all the time. It's, it's an, an easy, easy sport. So a lot of people have said that. Oh, and, speak and speaking of Pink Whitney, RA, we got the behind the scenes vlog coming out of the tour. Is that what you're going to tee us up with? Took the words right out of my mouth. Ooh, absolutely. I can't wait to see these Pink Whitney mutants. tour vlog. I can't either. Between Rick from Red Deer and memes, two absolute Canadian characters. I'm dying to watch this. So that's going to be dropping. What night is what night's that? Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Thursday? Let's Wednesday. keep the theme going. Every Wednesday night, we're dropping fire flames on the Spit and Chicklets YouTube channel. I don't know how many of those uh, of you people out there know you can watch the full podcast with us on screen on our YouTube channel. Sometimes I'll see comments on the Twitter like, "Hey, man, you guys should try you know dropping the video form of this stuff." And it's just like we we've been doing it for years, sir. Um, I know technology <laughs> might not be your thing, Dad. Dad, is that you? <laughs> no, I saw him asking to put it on Spotify. Like, does it matter what? I mean, it's on YouTube, buddy. It's it's all the fucking same if you're on the internet. Oh, they're okay. So he wants it yeah. on video form on Spotify. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, fuck! Of the, I'll one come of over and cook on, you yeah. dinner too, buddy. Jesus yeah. Christ! Right. Send us Rogan's dough, and then we'll be right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we do have a couple of young guests we're going to bring on in a little bit. Not right now. Brady Kachuk and Trevor Zegers, a couple of young friends of the program, a couple of characters. We'll get to them in a little bit. Uh, once again, if you haven't grabbed some Pink Whitney, go out and get some your local package store or your local bar. So boys, last week we had Keith the Endel retired on our show. And then within what, five, six hours, two other huge NHL all-stars do the same thing. First, the Dano Chara retires, then PK Subban. Uh, future Hockey Hall of Famer Chara hung up the skates after 24 NHL seasons with four teams, eight, 1,880 regular season and playoff games, the Stanley Cup of the 2011 Bruins, a Norris Trophy, plus a finalist five other times, Seven-time member of the year-end All-Star teams. Uh, he signed the ceremonial one-day contract to retire as a Bruin. The only defenseman to play more than him, Chris Chelios. And, I mean, we've talked about it before. The biggest free agent signing, certainly in Bruins history, and quite likely NHL history, considering how much he changed the progression of the franchise. He brought the toughness back. He brought back the culpability. Uh, and there's no doubt his number 33 will go up to the Raptors with another 6'9 guy who won number 33 uh, at the Garden. But let's go to you, Wit. I know you played against them a little bit. Some from remembrances you might have against Wachara or playing Wachara against them. Nothing very in particular. I remember him fighting George LaRock uh, at center ice, I think twice in one game when I was on the Penguins. But no one else like him. Just, just an absolute machine in every sense of the word. When I think of him, it's kind of like, I guess different because uh, you know you think of the Stanley Cups and everything. But my first vision will forever be Brian McCabe. It's like getting thrown around. Brian McCabe was a big, strong, tough motherfucker. Zidane Ochara was literally lifting him up and down like Wyatt was lifting up Liam up and down <laughs> this weekend. Like there's no sort of uh, there's in what world is another NHL or literally tossing around somebody like a legitimate rag doll. But for me, Chara is like such evidence of what true hard work and determination does, because yeah. I've said this before. Merle's knows. I watched an AHL All-Star game he was in. He was the worst player. I don't even know how he was in the AHL All-Star game. And he was so obsessed with proving people wrong. And he got moved to Ottawa. He was working out. I talked to uh, super agent Matt Cater, our buddy, Zidane Ochara's agent, who let's, let, Cater, look, let's, let's help us out. Maybe get down and sit down for Big Z. We would fly anywhere he wants us to be to sit down with this guy. But Cater's telling me this guy got to Ottawa. He's working out three times a day. He's going to the rink. He's working out before practice. He's working out after practice. And then he's back there after dinner time getting another workout in because he was obsessed with proving people wrong and being as good as he could ever get to be. And, and I think that when you look back at his career, all right, maybe you wrote it to the group, but who do you compare him to? It's maybe Chris Pronger a little, but like, I think just the amount of, I, I would say Chara fought a lot more, right? I mean, Pronger didn't, didn't really have to, and neither did Z, but he was such a machine. And for, for, for as long as he played, I think the toughest guy in the league. I, I, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Like, everyone would talk about the toughest guy's league, and then the conversation yeah, would, be would go, doing oh, besides Zeke, Big Z. Like, yeah, he yeah, wouldn't yeah. even, they're like, oh, besides Big Z, besides Big Z. He doesn't count. So it was just like, and getting to the Bruins and changing the entire culture and what had gone on there for so long and immediate, he was immediately given the C, right, R.A.? Yeah. 
Yep. Right. Yeah, I mean, you right sign as a free agent and you're just given the C. It's like that's how dominant he was when he went over. Looking back, Ottawa chose Wade Redden over him. A crazy move. But Wade Redden was an all star at the time. So it's just a it's a career that that will probably never be matched because I don't think you'll see somebody that big and strong and tough and that good with the puck and that good on his feet for how s- the size of him ever again. Yeah, especially for when he was coming up, I, I would imagine like even now, g- given that like skating is such a strength, where you know early you on, get a chance now maybe right, he looked like Bambi, and and the, you know there was phys- physically he was this giant, but in in hockey it's just like you know you look like a giraffe out there, but you you, you always go back to the relentless work ethic and what got him to there. And like, even as his career progressed, like, you know, when he, when he was later years in Ottawa and then when he got to Boston, like he was, you know, on the power play, putting up points because he was able to handle all of it. But as, as everything progressed and other guys came in were more offensive, he had no problem taking a a smaller role where it was more five on five shutdown, blocking shots, penalty killing, even to the point where last year, like, you know, I, I know he couldn't move around much and he was getting as old as he was, but just, you know, th- that leadership he provided in the Islanders locker room, the fact that even last year got back to the fighting days where that's where he felt he could contribute. A guy who had played over 1,500 games in the National Hockey League, won a Stanley Cup, won a Norris, had nothing else to prove, was okay as a teammate resorting himself back down to that fifth, sixth guy. Even if he wasn't in the lineup, wasn't going to bitch, he'd be the first guy in the gym rubbing off on all those other guys in, in the organization. So... Just from like top to bottom, work ethic, uh, how humble, uh, how well he, he worked in the community and like what he meant to that organization everywhere he went, whether it was Ottawa, uh, whether it was Boston, whether it was the Islanders, and where was he quickly? Washington as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's first ballot. Uh, oh, yeah. Most regular season games ever played by a defenseman, which which is even crazier that Chelios played over three seasons of playoff hockey throughout his career. So Chelios uh, is actually lower on the regular ga- season games, but uh, just a, an outstanding fucking career, man. And I actually asked Ra, I said, "What do you say in the in the his spe- uh, speech retirement thing?" Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the type of guy who'd want to get in the management position right away. And, and you know, because he's such a workaholic. But it was nice to hear him say he's going to kick back and relax and enjoy some family time. He's, yep. he's the opposite of Brady, basically. Yeah, Boston's his home. He says he's going to spend some time with the kids, take it easy. And the Bruins say, hey, whenever you want to talk about a potential front office job, hit us up. But, you know, I don't think he's in any sort of major hurry for that. Uh, funny, interesting note, of course, everything has to make fun of the Toronto Maple Leafs on the Internet. Uh, there are currently no longer any NHL players that the Leafs have beaten the playoffs now that Char is the out. The curse is removed. There that you go. Amazing. There we go. Yeah, ready That's for our run, baby. Leafs took a beating. And, um, but just, a couple just other to... things about Char that, that had come out. Like, maybe these stories had been out there prior, but I just didn't remember seeing them but um matt brown is a kid who in 2010 was paralyzed he's from norwood massachusetts he was 15 he's, he was 15 years old at the time and and he put out a tweet um that after he got home from the hospital chara came over unannounced and his his whole high school team was over there and he took pictures with everyone and like just that type of guy where i think yeah. the kid said he knew life was way more than just hockey and 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 I got a real kick out of uh, Brad Marchand's quotes about him. I think at the beginning of training camp or whenever the media talked to him uh, after Z announced it, and and he talked about how he was out for a month with an injury. He took a real estate course. He he learned how to speak five or six different languages. He was reading books all the time. So he was one of those guys. And I think his quote ends up saying he wasn't trying to just improve as a hockey player. Like he was trying to improve as a human being. And it sounds like cliche, but as you retire and you realize there is so much more to life than the game, it it makes total sense why somebody as smart as Chara realizes while he's playing to get ahead of that and to always be improving yourself as a person, not just as a player, even when all the pressure and your entire livelihood is put on you as a hockey player. So just a guy who thinks so outside the box and like you hear for years, he, he had like one cappuccino a summer as his dessert. I'd love to interview this guy because I've heard so many different, it's like William Wallace. He killed 11 men with like lightning bolts coming out of his arse. I think it was, uh, I think it was a glass of wine when he won a cup. Glass of wine when he, he wasn't a, a big okay. boozer. 
Well, yeah, Marlos got so, fifty men. Congr- congratulations! I mean, and, and we didn't even mention whole, talk about getting cucked. Keith Yandel announces retirement, <laughs> <laughs> and Charo and Subban do it seven <laughs> minutes later. It's like, could Keith not get one day? Seriously, but going from a, a project, I guess that's the difference between him and Prager. I guess I'd say Wit Prager was a high draft pick. Charo was a project, yep. worked at it, worked at his game, and now you know he's going to the Hall of Fame too. So just a, a testament to a great guy who busted his ass and, and achieved the heights of his career. So uh, kudos to, to Z and. Congrats on your reti- his retirement. Merles, did you have anything? You yeah, I got a fun you? fact. I That's think right. I took, I was such a pigeon. I took like six minor penalties in my NHL days. And one of them was high sticking against Chara. Oh my God. Like the that biggest is like Merle fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Tallest guy in NHL history. And I get a high sticking mate. You couldn't even reach him with your stick. <laughs> I don't even know. He must've been leaning over. Oh, uh, embarrassing. <laughs> And I mentioned PK as well. A PK Subban, one of the most electrifying D-men of his generation, also called it a day after 13 NHL seasons. Uh, spent seven years in Montreal, then three in Nashville. Then he finished up with three in New Jersey. 930 regular season and playoff games. Uh, won the Norris in 13. Made the all-rookie team in 2011. Of course, made it to the Stanley Cup final in 2017 with the Preds. And also, we got to talk about his impact off the ice uh, as a high-profile black player. He had such a huge impact off the ice, encouraging like not one generation, but a couple generations of kids who look like him, who might not have even thought to play the game or thought they could. And he's opened the doors up to them by huge stretches. And he's also done so many other charitable invent endeavors. He gave the money to the hospital up in Montreal. He had the best buddies program in both New Jersey and Nashville. Uh, I would suspect he's going to end up on TV. He was great on uh, oh, ESPN yeah. last year, pretty much his, I guess, audition. Uh, Biz, let's go to you first on PK. I mean, like, I just, some people may argue he's not a Hall of Famer as far as his playing resume. I would I would say that maybe it's a 50-50 crowd, but just his impact off the ice and then what he's going to continue moving forward for the game, I think it's a no-brainer that he ends up in the Hall of Fame. Um, especially, you know, look at the accolades. Like, from a team standpoint, he won two you World think he juniors. gets to the Hall of Fame? I think that it would be lunacy if P.K. Subban with with – the the pressure in which his career like he had coming in and how he delivered even from every time he was asked put a smile on and and you know and, and help grow the game from like at least an interest standpoint from think how many new fans he brought to the game he, he he's electric when he you know when he gets up there that's why he's going to transition into into media well he already basically did it last year as you mentioned by going on those few times i think he's going to get the bag from espn and just his playing career, he he won his Vesna. He got two yeah, he World Vesna, Juniors. That was a good one. He won. Uh, he won. Uh, 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 what, what's that? Oh, the Vesna, the fucking Norris. <laughs> Shut up, Wit. Fuck. You're all over me. You're trying to put me on my heels. You just then, said he won the Vesna. I what know. The fuck? You think I'm going to sit here in silence? <laughs> <laughs> you know um, me. And he he won uh, Olympic gold as well. I believe he was at the one in Sochi, and. I just think he, for about a six to seven year period, he was probably in the top 10 defensemen in the league. And he, and, you and think, he was, uh, Weber's a hall of famer. I think that, I think that if you, if, if you consider all the international success in which like we talked about Carey price getting in, I think that if Carey price gets in, then Shea Weber did, but Shea, Shea Weber also never won a, a Norris. So I, I, I think, I don't think Shea Weber ever won a Norris. Wow. Am I wrong, RA, or am I am, am I really? I'm looking a, it up because I I don't know either. So if I, I if I call you, the, the Norris be... the Vesna and also fuck up the Che Weber not, never won a Norris, I think I'm gonna have to sit out the rest of the segment here, guys. <laughs> Gee, I know you had something you wanted to add, buddy. He has somehow never won the award. Never won yeah, a Norris. Three wow. time finalist. Wow, I was just gonna nuts. say with PK Subban, mm-hmm. I would bet almost anything that he's made 78 million dollars career earnings. I bet he makes. Way more than that on TV. What do you think these people are making, bro? Pump the Brady brakes, just sir. signed for four hundred million. He's not going You're on. Comparing in- him to Tom Brady, I'm saying that he's got. He's not doing a TV. Ch- I mean, like a sports ESPN thing. I think he's got like Good Morning America, like Michael Strahan. Oh, right. Okay, over well there you and go. Michael Strahan okay. made more. That's about thirty million a year. I think. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking those. just in the hockey world. I'm like, holy shit, he's gonna be breaking. Yeah, like I'm a business. Like, wait a minute, I'm not making shit. Of that, TNT, what the fuck? I'm eating fucking ramen noodles over here. What's going on? 
No, I th- I do though. Like he he's gonna like he'll do hockey. I think he'll sign a deal with I ESPN think, uh, once a week. I think the Good Morning America is an that's an interesting. So take. I I think I think that I love Grinelli getting his takes out there. I love it, but I think to say that he's gonna make more than seventy eight million dollars on television is a wild take. If you prove me wrong, I'll eat it. I eat all my incorrect takes like a professional would, but that's a wild statement. Seventy money is legit million, nowadays. Bro. How many people on TV have made more than seventy-eight million dollars? Not many, but I'm saying. I mean, he's got thirty years to do this now. Think about it. He has all the time since, in the world to make since, this money. Since we're on the money topic, it, in Montreal, I want to say he committed it. Did he commit it before he was traded away? But he committed ten million dollars to the the children's hospital that there. When every year he does these amazing viral videos where he basically is Santa Claus and he just decks these kids out with like the most insane gifts. It's I mean, there's probably what like it's been going on for like seven eight years. And there's go good online. videos that come out of it too. Oh, buddy, he's he and then going down to Nashville. I believe he was doing something with the police department there, uh, like boys in blue shirts. Best I, I buddies, yeah. Yeah, best buddies. It was something like that. I know I'm butchering it, but like I said, just off ice impact while he was playing the impact he made on the ice and what he's going to do as far as growth for the game moving forward on television. I say hands down Hall of Famer. No questions asked. I Hmm. I think of uh, the beginning when he hopped on the in in the scene of the NHL with the Canadians that that goal he scored. With I think around a minute left in Game Seven, R. A. Was it? Mm-hmm. It was the 2011 Cup for the Bees, right? Uh, yeah, it was. And uh, Subban tied up Game round, Seven yeah. with I don't remember who passed it to him. It was a one timer from the middle of the blue line on the power play. I think it was power play. First of all, it was a rocket pass to even one time. It was impressive, and he put it had to be a 98 mile an hour one timer right over Tim Thomas to to tie up the game. And I think he just gave it like a sh- you're like this kid, he's got something. Because I want to say at the time, maybe he's 21 years old, roughly around then. But like, and everyone was booing him when he touched the puck. Wit every time he had touched the puck that early. Yeah, him and Marshan would have like that little rivalry. So anytime I was at that game, anytime he touched the puck, the whole arena booed him. I've never seen the Garden go from so loud to so quiet so quickly when he scored that goal. It was insane. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And 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 his first few years were electric. I mean, I remember Dion Phaneuf's first few years were similar yeah. in that he's running people over. He's scoring rocket one timers. He's really changing the game as a very young player. PK was this, was the same. I think that uh, if you asked Marshawn, one of the hardest hits he ever took was PK Subban at center ice in uh, in the Bell Center or whatever it's called. Much all the salt rocked. Subban trucked him and he threw a bunch of big hits along with running the power play. I think it goes without saying that you do have to mention, you know, it, it, his brand became so big that it did affect not him as a player, but his relationship with teammates. I I would stand by that. I remember he left Montreal. He came back. He played, they played him in Nashville and he went at it with Brendan Gallagher. And then he returned home to Montreal for his first game. And him and Gallagher went at it again. After the game, Gallagher was saying, why are you talking about him so much? He didn't even do anything. He was minus one. He's all about himself. He'll talk about himself as, as, as much as you guys need him to. So there was certainly at the end of his time in Montreal, there was teammates who didn't appreciate how he maybe in their minds treated himself as a little bit bigger than the team. Uh, I think Eve, he even had a quote. Now this, th- there was a quote before this was dot, dot, dot. This is from an athletic article, an athletic article years ago. He said, things changed for me as my career went on, because I think in a lot of ways, the hype became real. So sort of my, I don't want to say popularity, but everything with me, the brand, everything around me sort of grew there was a time where he kind of was on his own page a little bit in terms of like how he kind of maybe uh, not treated his teammates, but I don't think he was spending a ton of time with his teammates away from the rink, which really in the end doesn't matter if you're performing at a high level, but the trade, the way it went down, I mean, that was a shocking trade. You guys remember that news. Yeah. Like, oh, Holy yeah. shit. Like how could they ever trade him? So I, I think forever he'll be kind of a hot, button topic where there's people who talk about him as a, as a hall of famer as biz does. And then there's people who constantly say he's overrated. So it's like, he did so many great things on and off the ice. And he also had um, different. What's what's the word of different uh, controversies kind of surround him throughout his career. Would you say that's fair? 
Yeah, I, I think that it ended up working out. I mean, you mentioned like that 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 rise to stardom, especially in living in Montreal. Like Toronto is one thing. You know, you also have the Raptors and you have the baseball team and other focus. So it'd be basically being like Matthews in Toronto, whereas like you're just on this island in Montreal where all that matters is the Canadian. So yeah, I guess I could see where it, it, it definitely became a distraction, especially with the examples you provided with Gallagher. Now that might be Gallagher's view on on you know how a team should operate and and also other guys who have had successful teams would say you know when you're all hanging out together and and there's there's a strong glue and, and a good bond that's usually when you have success I think him going down to Nashville for the league perspective and the way that it seemed like his teammates embraced him there as well as the city everything worked out for a reason and 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 he brought you know, him to a cup final, and R.A. Brought- got screwed because he scored a goal in that friggin' game, R.A., didn't he? Game yeah, one. First game, first game, I had first goal. It cost me a few grand, and then <laughs> they reviewed it, and they never gave a proper review to say he was actually offside. But I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm glad you did, Wait, Yeah. R.A. text me on the side, please PK's, bring up uh, uh, retirement turns into R.A. talking about his gambling yeah. loss. But, but he had no – I don't think he had real controversies, though. It was just, you know – No, no, no. I, that's why controversy you was know. not the correct yeah. word. I'm glad you said that. I'm yeah, glad yeah, you said that. No, yeah, but I, I'm actually glad that he got to play in the states and, and help grow a, a smaller market. I I couldn't have, it couldn't have been a better landing spot, especially the way that that team was headed. And then yeah, even in that finals against Pittsburgh, like him him joking around with uh, what did he hand he hand Crosby Listerine or he made a comment about how he had stinky breath or something. Yeah, some Listerine shit. Yeah, I don't know how much it is actually said on the ice or if they embellished it in the press conference after. But, yeah, it kind of became a side story that, you know, Sid just ignored and ended up just winning another Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. All, but, no, all, I mean, all, he, all had some, he had some end-to-end rushes, though. Like, if you're watching a Canadiens game at the peak of his game, the peak of his powers, he would go – that place would go bananas when he touched the puck. And there was an excitement as he'd round the net. I mean, I think the only thing that really hurt him in the NHL is he kind of lost a step a little bit just as he got older. He played 13 like years. Everybody but else. At the be- like everybody. But at the beginning, dude, that guy was a game breaker. And yeah, when as a Beast fan, every time he went on the boards, I shit my pants because he was so goddamn good during that era when he was playing for Montreal. But Biz, I know you wanted to chime in as well. I think Zero that there was, a, there was a quote somebody said when he signed his deal with Montreal, that big one, he told him, he's like, this will be the last contract I signed in the NHL. And somebody was like, what? It's like, you're, you're crazy. Like you're going to go on and play another five years past that. But I guess he, he basically predicted that he was going to be done by the time that one, that one was finished. He had his sights on making another 85 million off the ice. That's true. <laughs> Good morning. America is calling. Well, either way, PK kudos, congrats on a great career. Yeah. We Unreal. enjoyed watching you play, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around town soon. Uh, boys, I think we should maybe send it over to Trevor Zegris. What do you think? Yeah? Okay, Let's we'll do, do that. Before we do, we want to let you know his interview was brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Boston Sports. Created by fans for fans, Game Time is a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. Tons of Barstool fans are using it and hitting us up on social, telling us about all the great deals they've been getting all summer. And we've been using it as well. G hit up a bunch of playoff games. I know a bunch of other guys hit some concerts. It's an unreal deal. So easy to use. Amazing deals. You are going to love it. So download the Game Time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code Chicklets for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. And now... Enjoy Trevor Zegris. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome this young stud back to the show as he gets ready for his third NHL season. Made a handful of spectacular plays last year, crashed the all-star game, and now he's a video game cover boy, and he's just getting started. Thanks a bunch for joining us once again on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, Trevor Zegris. What's up, dude? Hey, what's happening, guys? Thanks for having me. The dude. Our pleasure. We got you back. The dude. The dude. The dude's right been now? straight up big timing us, just pushing us back for a tennis match. Yeah, yeah, who's That's this my tennis bedtime. match against? Yeah, we, we had a big match. Me and Jamie, we've been playing usually after practice for like kid guest conditioning or whatnot. And I, I toasted him today. So it's it's a good day. That's Jamie Drysdale. Drysdale, yeah. We're we're living together and we usually we're, we started playing tennis after practice. And we'll play usually Two sets would do like a best of three, and uh, I got him. I got him this go around. I beat him six two seven five. It was awesome. What, what's what do you the, guys what's play the action for? on these? Yeah, yeah. 
honestly, nothing, nothing right now. Like this oh, is like the second time sakes. we played. <laughs> do you need a scorekeeper um, when you play? Do you have someone keeping score? Or do you just do it yourself? No, no, no. Yeah, we do it ourselves. We're, wow. We got it. We got it going good right <laughs> no, now. They have a couple <laughs> ball girls though. They're all set. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're verified on Instagram too. I bet. <laughs> that was what it could be one of the first questions I was going to ask you. Like since this, uh, you know, the craze of last season, of course, now on the cover, I'm pretty sure you got like celebrities sliding into your DMs. Like who is the most notable check mark that has reached out to you uh, given your stardom? Like guys or girls? <laughs> oh, any, any, any celebrities. All the above. Any, that Sylvester Stallone want to rub elbows with you or what? Oh, man, that's funny. Um, well, the after the the one over the net last year, my, I DM'd with Michael B. Jordan for a little bit, which was hilarious and then uh towards the end of the year uh the beams i was hitting the beams up <laughs> get out of here i was gonna yeah. say you follow you follow him harry styles and taylor swift on instagram and i figured it'd be a good time to play the game marry fuck kill so if you had to if you had to pick one of those let, let's start with the the have sex uh, like, i mean it's pretty it, it's pretty obvious here it's pretty much a layup now are you a taylor <laughs> swift fan like are you do you listen to her music i love t swift dude i love her yeah she's my guilty pleasure song i guess so to speak <laughs> she's got jams seems Jam. like a little bit of a loser but or but well, the music's say, legit i was going to say you're forced good tunes. to pick hey, good tunes good tunes <laughs> She does have some bangers. That is it. Nineteen sixty nine. One of her tunes. It's like a year. A, a year. It was on it one of her be. last albums. She's got a couple of good ones. I like twenty two. Uh, Wildest dreams is good. It's a classic. Um, Lover is a good one. She's pumping out some good tunes right now. So I mean, you got to be careful though. If I, I don't know if she is available, but if you do end up, you know, hooking up, like she's been known to write songs about her exes. So I wouldn't break her heart, or you're going to be victim I'd be of. Pumped. Oh, I'd be get some royalties out of it. Oh, there'd be there'd be there'd be like a, a a house music mix of it playing at the clubs. He'd be set for life if yeah, he had the she's breakup. Like your toe drag ain't that sweet, your flow ain't that great. Now because of you, oh. I just hit the vibrator and masturbate. Oh, jeez. No, did you, you write watch? that earlier? You might be on ad libbed. No, that was that was. We had Al meets Larry man. Flint with fucking. Now, uh, oh, Zeke's Zeke's uh, your 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 future teammate McTavish. He's a fucking mutant, built like a brick shit house. He pigeon tossed my shampoo idea. I had a, a a mason by mason, and the shampoo was served in mason jars. Now I thought of one for you because he pigeon tossed me. Okay, hear me out. Okay, here it goes. What if we did one? Call it do dude minus the d get rid of the big d which is dandruff and of course d for ducks buddy do hey, if you go in on if you go in on me with this i'm in <laughs> yes here we go finally i got fucking pigeon toss on all these ideas and i'm getting you at the top of your game you, grinelli print it we got it get the contract <laughs> right now it in. If you get 33 points this year in 80 games, you know why. You teamed up with this goon. He'll be calling you nonstop pregame meal, pregame nap. You'll, he'll ruin your season. Heads up. Beware. Summer project. Summer project. You won't even need the fucking money you're going to make on the non-bridge deal after we hook up and we're selling do by Trevor oh, Degris. Dude that's minus it. the D. All right. Did you like it or no? I mean, That's you're a bald does. guy who doesn't use shampoo, so I, I really don't weigh in too much on the shampoo. We'll go me, me, you, me, you, and get soft. You, you might think I have two brands. Oh, okay, this is how comfortable <laughs> this guy is getting. Z or uh, getsy has got one foot on the way out, and he's already fucking. Oh, no, he's got both feet on the way out. He's got both feet on the way out. Yo, he's oh, done. I heard he might pull a Brady and come back just to fucking, uh, just to let I you know so. that you're not LeBron James and you can't switch your number up after one successful season. God, I hope he comes back. That'd be so awesome. Uh, so, yeah, you went to from forty six to eleven. Was that just getting rid of a, like a bogan number? You just want something different. Was the where's the logic behind that? Yeah, forty six. Um, our old GM Bob Murray, um, Wits Wits boy. Uh, Shout out Murph. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> um, that's just the number that you got on the way in, and yep. um, his thing was his thing was you got to earn your number. And um, once kind of got a full season under my belt. It was time to go back to, to 11, which I kind of always worn, I guess, growing up and whatnot. So. You skilled it up. You skilled it up and got 11, baby. 
<laughs> yeah, Torts is pissed, man. That's why he took the head coaching job. He just wants the, the two games against you this year, and he's going to fucking lay into you. Hey, you, uh, need, you need to pull off that move against the Flyers this year. Oh, Jesus. To, but I hope oh, you took Bobby Clack will jump out of the fucking do you have any? Do you have, hey, do you have anything else planned that you don't even have to share yet? And you, know, you can't ruin the surprise, but have you kind of been thinking a little uh, outside the box, per se, about something else this season? Just like stuff around the net that you like mess around with after practice that I think would be pretty funny. And you want to know who's really like got some crazy stuff is McCannish. Like just really? like a weird, like unbelievable set of hands, like doing the Zorro in the crease. Like if somebody's going to score something crazy, I think it's going to be that guy. The, what's the Zorro? Is that like when you when get you, it on the yeah. toe, like uh, whatever. And you start waving it around. Like he's got some crazy hands, dude. Yeah. It looks like I, it's I was, stuck with Velcro. I thought you were going to yeah. say he like shotgun a beer before he did it. He He's as like, he's as like old school Canadian as you can get. Oh my God. So funny, dude. Came okay, in today so you, for like for like picture day with like a full beard. I was like, <laughs> it's your first mugshot. Maybe you want to shave, maybe comb your hair. He, he's Ogie yeah, exactly. Oglethorpe. He's got a fake birth Ogie. certificate. Oglethorpe. Ogie. Even if he tries something in front of the net and it doesn't work out, he'll just drop his gloves and end up punching someone's head yeah. in anyway. So yeah. it's a win win oh, yeah. for him. So he's you never me. you you never did the marry or kill. So you got you got Harry Styles or or Bieber. Who you marrying? Who you killing? I mean, I just feel like maybe just because I know the Biebs a little bit, I'm gonna marry Biebs. And then, uh, unfortunately, kill Harry Styles. Yeah, so that, that's first. the right answer because he took uh, Ted Lasso, RA's buddy's uh, girl. Yeah. No and way. Then, yeah, that, they were making that movie. They started fooling around together. And but, then you know. Ted Lasso and her have had just an ugly divorce. Jesus yeah. Christ. They're like oh, serving really? each other publicly. Uh, that's besides the point. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, have, I have another question for you. What was it? It's, it was, was probably it? telling him to get a prenup. That was No, what no, I know what it was. How do you... How do you go about if if you've chatted with Bieber a couple of times? How do you go about just like throwing it out there or somehow getting the look to walk into like a fight with him or get go out with them one night? Like we've seen Matthews with them. Well, what's clout- the next step for you to be the Biebs guy? Clout chasing is the word you're looking exactly. For but I'd clout chase Biebs. Nothing, man. I'm letting him do his thing. I know he's reached out a couple of times and been like, no pressure, way man. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like way too nice to me for no reason. So I'm just letting him do his thing and. um I don't know if he wants to do stuff. You know, I'm not going to say no. Hey, hey, he's he's a big Christian now. You should invite him to church. That's an easy in. That is such an easy in. Yeah. Go to church. Yeah, Zeke, yeah. Zeke's, yeah. yeah. You'd fit in well there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd wear this hat for church. See, you at, you at the beach right now? Where are you right now with that background? What's going on? Yeah, this is my setup, this is my setup for uh, back in. Uh, oh, the golden hour. Yeah, that is nice. Did you buy hour. a place out there? No, we're just uh, me and uh, Jimmy. We're renting in uh, CDM. So this is our spot around six o'clock. We come up here, just kind of hang out, watch the sunset, and then call it a night. Or Can I ask that, that, hey, that's good. When I was out there, like I wasn't exactly playing great. The team wasn't doing great, but that is the best living. Going back, yeah. I was on Balboa. Like New Newport Beach is beautiful. Beautiful man. Like I feel so lucky, dude. You have no idea. When Verbeek got the job, did he call you right away? Like have you chatted with him a bunch before the season or what what's what's that relationship like? Um he took over for the last couple months of last year. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, over the summer though, was there more discussions? Yeah. Dude, the guy like uh literally changed the whole culture in like three weeks, man. It's nuts. Like guys were just on a different level down the stretch and um, like all like the, like the little stuff, like breakfast, lunch, like he dialed everything in. So it was awesome. Was he cooking it? <laughs> <laughs> he was behind the stove for a little he was bit. Al- he was omelet guy for, 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 for the rest <laughs> of the season. The That's why guy. you guys turned it around. That's why we went on that heater down the stretch. He was making hey, what did uh, <laughs> what, what did you say to him when he didn't back, uh, bring back your buddy, uh, Sonny Milano? Yeah, that's thanks because I, I train with Sonny. I'm pretty good buddies with Sonny in the summertime. And, um, I mean, obviously, I love playing with him. I mean, hanging out with him, he lived right on the beach, like five minutes from me. So it sucks not having him back. But um, he's pumped about Calgary. I was talking to him the last couple of days. Um, so he's ready to go for sure. You should have went in Verbeek's office and fucking dropped your nuts right on his desk and been like, <laughs> you better get my fucking boy back. I'm the cover guy. He's you like, Bieber fuck, DM you, you me, wanna, bitch. You want to be in this league in a couple of years, Patty? You better fucking bring my boy back. Oh, I would never, but that would be something funny to do for sure. <laughs> How did you find out you got the cover of NHL 23? It was last year. It was early, like March of last year. Um, I got a call from uh, one of my agents or whatever, and they were like, 
probably not gonna believe this, but EA wants me on the cover. I think I was like filling up my car or something, like something doing something brand. Oh, he's just like us. What do you mean March of last he year? Pumps like, his own gas. Like this March? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It was like middle of the season last year. Like wakey wakey. Middle of the season last year. No wonder year, you shut it, it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like three years ago they called so, me in March. I was, was at BU. Yeah, exactly. But uh no, I was in shock, man. I literally didn't believe it for like a couple of weeks. And then um, more of the stuff started coming through and like kind of what we were going to do. And um, then we ended up shooting the cover towards the end of the season. Um, and then I had to keep it a secret for like six months, which was tough for me yeah, to do. Right. I, was telling, I was telling all my boys, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was popping bottles. Like, I had the cover boy. <laughs> I was like, fellas, you can't tell anybody. The I whole state of Connecticut for- knew, California yeah, knew. Right. Everybody know. What was up with that that cactus shoot you had on the other day? What was that all about? So random. They were like, none of the guys wanted to put it on. Like, everyone said you'd be the only guy to throw it on. Like, would you wear it for a photo? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) So I tossed it on. I think it was like a like the fanatic station or something. Pretty random. Buddy, that's what makes you so marketable. You're so fun loving and you're willing to like do silly shit. And like hockey needs people like you. Like they were like I don't don't think there's any surprise that you're on the cover. And I was even go further, like you had to have had even crazier types of endorsements thrown your way since your everything's happened and evolved over last year. Yeah, like do. Not (laughs) other than do. Give me any crazy ones that, that have come up. Uh, um, crazy endorsements. I mean, nothing like too absurd. I want to ask a hockey question. Um, a lot of uh, anticipation for this year, a lot of pressure given with what you've accomplished. What was the, the, the one thing that you had to prove the most in the off season in order to prepare for this year? I mean, I kind of treated it like every other year, you know, I mean, I've been training with the same trainer back home for 10 years now. And, um, I don't know. Like, I didn't like to think about like expectations and that stuff. Cause then you kind of get in your own head and then you start second guessing yourself, which I've never done up till this point. So just try to keep it as normal as possible. And, um, obviously there was a little more stuff I had to do this summer, like running around wise, but, uh, for the most part, I got pretty much all my work in. So pretty excited to get going here on Sunday or whatever. Uh, can yeah. you, can you address, um, I talked to Caulfield briefly. Like, do you have a pet Komodo dragon? <laughs> I'd say uh, it's a bearded dragon. I had him last year. Uh, his name was Drago. And uh, I picked him up from PetSmart one day. Like the lady just like threw him on me. I was like, take him. <laughs> so I had him all last year. And then I left him here over the summer. And my old roommate from last year dropped him off in like some library. So now he's just like chilling in like the OC library somewhere. Like for all like the little kids to watch or something. I don't know. So like they, they allow it to live there and they feed it and take care of it. Or it's just like roaming in like, yeah, it's like in like the pipes (laughs) Jurassic park. (laughs) What if we get like a news headline, like like, bearded (laughs) dragon bites infant and dies at the library. Like that you're fucked, dude, your career's over. You're going to be like, this this, this dragon, he was a killer too. He, he was big. And uh, no, I think he's in a cage. He's got a good little habitat. So he's doing good. That's normal. That's 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 amazing. Hey. I already knew it wasn't a Komodo. No, though. I, I think I actually said bearded dragon yesterday. When you said Komodo dragon, no, Komodo dragon is a giant lizard. They're poisonous. They're meat eaters. You don't want yeah. to be anywhere near a Komodo dragon. Monitor lizard looks like one, but so I, I don't know. If we, I, don't, I don't awesome. know if we've talked about this on the pod before, Ra. And you're the movie guy. It might have been you who brought it up, but um, in the, one of the 007 movies. The, the 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 last Bond guy, he was obsessed with these gloves that he'd gotten on one of their breaks. So he wanted to wear it in one of the scenes. And it was the Komodo dragon scene where he has to use the gun. But the gun they described earlier in the mu- movie as it had to read his fingerprint. So they had to like either fly everybody back in to refilm the scene or put like like the fake color of, of skin over his hands for that scene. And, and if you slow it down, you can see it. So, yeah, so that was the Komodo dragon scene that they had. And those things are fucking like 200 pounds. Yeah, those, those are, they're like they're dinosaurs. They get, like, their saliva is poisonous. They kill you just by biting it. You don't want to be anywhere near an actual Komodo dragon, not at all. A bearded right, dragon, no yeah, you, you can, they can be your pets. Okay, see, I'm glad you, we squashed that. You, yeah, did you do anything all summer? You take any trips after the season get over? You see some exotic places or what? Um, when the season ended, uh, we did like a Getzlaff uh, retirement trip up to Cabo. Nice. Um, like 15 of us. It was an absolute blast. Um, so we ripped it around for a week out there with those guys. Um, I was in New York for a couple months and then the last month leading up to the season, I went down to Michigan and stayed with the Hughesies for a month. 
Oh um, just hung out with those guys and trained and skated. And, uh, we, we actually took a golf trip, like up to like Northern Michigan or whatever. Um, did you play like whatever. Arcadia and all those courses? We played Kingsley and then Lock and Heath. Really nice. We did, right. We did, we did 36 at Kingsley. Yeah. It was awesome. We had a blast. I want to go, I want to go up there. So nice up there. Were they, were they awesome. at the white party this summer in the Hamptons? Did you see any of that? Were you yeah, there? They were, I, I was there, but I did not get to look for the white party. I went to like some like jungle themed party, like on the beach <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> oh, you went to that, like the hedonism uh, Hamptons version. That's where RA used to go on vacation. The all sex yeah. resort. <laughs> they went to the white party they said it was nuts so. se- seven nights in seven days to get a makeout notch <laughs> all inclusive though yeah i put a girl <laughs> from across town so yeah at least i have to pay for my fucking watered down drinks anyways <laughs> <laughs> uh, z i know you were uh, raw, uh, yeah, runner up for the call of the trophy but you made the all rookie team did that you got a little bonus for that or what don't they give you a little scratch for the whole already need some gambling debts paid off <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll pay you back in 2029 <laughs> <laughs> that or, that soon? Uh, that's so good uh, maybe there might have been something <laughs> yeah there you go no, i'm not asking for the amount i just was reading stat things i know they don't give us bonuses like they used to but I, i'm pretty sure you get them for the all rookie team yeah i think you do yeah there we go i, I know you got to stay tight lipped sometimes about what happens on these retirement trips or any trips with the boys uh wh- like what did you guys do obviously golf nice dinners was like was there a night where guys got up and gave speeches to congratulate them were there a lot of former teammates that joined you that you'd never met uh no it was pretty much just the guys from the team last year um we went on this boat that came from california it's called like the marlin magic it was awesome they had like whatever like, pull crew like we were eating breakfast lunch and dinner on there uh, like you said, we, we played a couple rounds of golf and then we did a couple deep sea fishing trips and I've never gone deep sea fishing before. Neither had Jamie and, or a couple guys. And so all the older guys were laughing and they were like picking guys who they thought were going to like be sick all day on the boat. Like it was like eight of us just <laughs> over the edge puking for like two hours. <laughs> like, it was like biz. <laughs> oh, hey, I, I had a I tough no, time. I, dude, I had no idea, dude. It was terrible. Did you end yeah. up like coming to though and like getting your stomach and your sea legs and, and catching anything? Yeah. Well, the, there was a bunch of guys and there was a whole crew. So like some guys caught stuff, but I was wearing like bracelets. I was taking pills. I was like lying oh. down. I was like, I, I'm in trouble here, but uh, hell. I, I, I figured it out eventually. And yeah. Acid you know, to, like, stay out. <laughs> or whatever. I, I, it like, happened to me. I got off down. the boat and slept for 20 hours. You probably went out. <laughs> they were doing ayahuasca like Rogers on the boat. That's why they were all puking. But then I had like this, the sea legs afterwards was like the scariest part. So I'd be like walking around and my whole body was like swaying back and forth. I was like, I am, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, this is it for me. Yeah. I was like still on the boat. <laughs> Trevor, we talked about all the stuff that went on last year, all the plays you made. Did any uh, all the players, whether like current or former come up to you and say, Hey, like just keep doing what you're doing or tell you to change anything or any conversations like that with any older guys? Um, I mean, nothing that I can, I guess, remember off the top of my head, but I don't think anything ruffled too many feathers amongst like, guys in my team and that kind of stuff. But um, if there was something that I was doing that, that they didn't like, they had no problem telling me. So I think it was a good balance <laughs> of that for sure. Uh, what, what is Getsy up to right now? Just a lot of golf. Is he, is he getting bigger? Is he, is he working out still? What's the deal with him? We get a chat with him at some point, Biz. There's no way he's working out. That's for sure. He just had his, uh, the get slap shootout a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I saw him at that and he's doing great. He's, he's hanging out with, uh, with the family a little bit and taking care of the goats. He's got like six goats at his house. <laughs> Does he really? He's got, he's got goats. He's got everything, dude. He's got everything. What was that clip today that, that was online? What were you saying? Some about Mar- with Mario Kart or what you have the, the duck pushing you? What was that all about? <laughs> I was trying that to figure out what uh, you were saying. That was wing. And Wayne was pushing me around. I don't know. It's like this, like a little electrical car. It was like media day or something today. So he was bombing me around all the different stations. It was pretty funny. Is that were you saying? in the Were you in the room when uh, Sid came in and saw Flurry pranked him and taped up all his stuff? Yeah, I I, can't, I just finished uh, one of like the skates or whatever, and I I come in and Flowers taping all his stuff up. So I whatever took a couple photos and they were like, Sid's coming in five minutes, and I was like, I'm definitely staying for this. <laughs> so Flower jumped on the ice, and it was just whatever. I was just couple stalls down and he was good sport about it i probably would have been a little more angry than he was but 
uh, nonetheless pretty funny. What's Drysdale like as a roommate? Is he is he the cook? Who's the one uh, carrying most of the weight for the household duties? Uber Eats. Yeah, a lot of DoorDash. He actually just bought a barbecue yesterday. He didn't even tell me. So he might be wheeling that thing down today or tomorrow. Like literally from like across the street. So maybe he's going to start cooking for me. So you obviously get up for this season. When when down, When's camp stop you guys? Next couple of days? Uh, Thursday, yeah. So you're How'd you do in fitness call. testing? The skating test was tough. We got a new skating test this year. Well, and uh, and then I missed half like the, like the bike tests for going to like the media thing in Vegas. So oh, I gotta do those what an exchange that days. is. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I can sneak away without doing them, but I think I'm going to have to do them either today or tomorrow or the next day. Does Eakins get on you about diet? Because w- when he first coached in the league with the Oilers, there was a, a thing where he took all the donuts away from the, the media members in the, in, the, in the media lounge. And then to the point where the te- they were doing bike tests all throughout the season, like four or five times after games, if you didn't play a certain amount of time, he'd have you doing the Tour de France. That's yeah. like that's like taking that's... food away from the Komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that that last one you said is definitely still a thing. I think if it's a certain TOI, you had to ride the bike until whatever. Um, but no, he's awesome. He's been great. Um, the nutrition stuff, I'm kind of kind of dialed in on. I got somebody that comes over uh, a couple times a week and leaves some food for me in the fridge, so I just heat that up usually for dinner. Um, but no, it's, it's been good. So taking a look at the schedule, I know it's uh, not till January, but is uh coyotes game circled on the schedule? Is that all kind of left in the past after the last? Yeah. Year? What the fuck was that about, dude? <laughs> I don't know, but definitely not circled on any, any of our calendars for sure. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> that's not even a trip. Like, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're going to ASU. You're going to have like yeah. 18 DM slides from sorority girls trying to <laughs> hit you up about getting some due for their brothers, for their stocking stuffer. <laughs> uh, that's so good. No, but I can't time. wait. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I think it's gonna be sick playing at ASU. You know, maybe a student section. It might be a band. Like, it's gonna be awesome. There's a it student section. That's for sure. I have no idea, but if I had to take a guess, good idea. Um, last time you were on, I think you were about a week away from playing your first ever game at MSG, and then right afterward, I want to say you were gonna go celebrate your 21st birthday. So what was that whole experience like? Which club did you go to? How sloppy did you get? Dude, my 21st, honestly, wasn't, it was like nothing. I think we had a game the next day. So me and I took Jamie with me. There's this place, I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been there. It's called like Beachcomber or something. Um, it's in Laguna. It's like this like tiki shack that's like right on the water. And all I want to do is like order a drink with like my idea or whatnot. So I think me and Jamie ordered like two pina coladas and then went home. So it was nothing <laughs> crazy at all, but uh pretty funny we'll just go play our tennis match and then we'll have a pina colada together it'll be a great (laughs) birthday (laughs) yeah there was nothing nothing too exciting going on on like a tuesday in laguna that's for sure um i I want to know what your your line is this year yet or who you'll be playing with not sure um hopefully we can start getting some of that uh line stuff and chemistry stuff going uh next couple days but it's just been like kind of informal captain skates i guess right now you had a pretty big prediction at the beginning of last year. I think it was Caulfield was going to score 40. Obviously not the start he wanted, but after uh, St. Louis came in, he really turned things around. How much did you talk to him about the impact that he had on him and, and, and everything around his game when he took over? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Marty is Hall of Famer, so good. And a uh, guy you can trust, like as your coach, right? And, um, I don't know how his relationship was was with, uh, with that first coach, uh, but I'm actually pretty close with Marty. And because he coached at Mid Fairfield, where like my dad, like pretty much like runs Mid Fairfield. Okay. Um, so right, right when Marty was getting the job in Montreal, um, he texted me and is like, Marty to Montreal or whatever. So I called Cole like immediately, and I was like, dude, you're getting Marty. And he hung up and like whatever called all his buddies and was like, we're getting Marty. Um, and everybody was pumped up, but um, he, he loved them. And I saw that one clip of uh, Marty showing him something like on the power play and then him scoring like the next day. And yeah. uh, I just, I just feel like that's so cool. Like if you like tell him what to do and he's motivated and he wants to play for you, like you're going to get the best out of him. So I think it's great. How do you yeah, have a full? Oh, sorry. Wait, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that mid Fairfield program. I remember your father telling me, I knew he ran it when you were there. I didn't know if he still did, but that's a, yeah. Oh yeah. They're a wagon now in, in like hockey development for youth, youth kids. Right. 
Yeah, well, I mean, we had Marty at Mid Fairfield for like whatever, like five years, and yeah, um, that helped. I think when I think I think when he left, I think my dad actually took over like the team on the bench that he was coaching or whatnot. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're doing a good job, and um, I don't know, he loves like that youth hockey stuff, so he's he's killing it. Yeah, now that you got a full lap in, uh, on the season last year, what, what cities are you looking to visit with this year? Nashville. I mean, love it speaks Nashville. For itself. What, what do you like specifically about it? I think I know, but. That, uh, that strip that they have is awesome. With Broadway. all the different. That's where he throws Broadway. on his ass with chaps. <laughs> fucking goes down Broadway. Not all chaps ass. Grayson, Grayson assless chaps, so they were free at least. <laughs> yeah, we had, a, we had a blast in Nashville last year. We kind of played them towards the end of the season, so it was good. Oh, we had the outdoor, we had the outdoor game there. We had, I, it, was, it was a phenomenal yeah, that's, time. That's a sick city. Sick city. That place is awesome. Ziegs, are you the most eligible bachelor in the National Hockey League? Ooh. You got a you got a lady? No lady. <laughs> Just <laughs> no lady. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> Going into uh what what really is known stinks. as a contract year. No lady. Good I hope you, you. Se- secure the bag, my friend. We hope you have a great year. Is there anything, Grinelli? I know you're behind the scenes right now. Is there anything you wanted to to ask this uh this guy going into a big year? Yeah. So you've been trading with Jack Hughes. Uh, there's been a bit of contention on this podcast. Uh, I think Wit doesn't think. Jack what do you Hughes... think he's going to say to this, G? I, I want to hear what he's going to say. They, what do you gonna, think he's going to say? Gonna stroke off his buddy. Just like I want to hear him stroke year. off his buddy. He, so, Wit doesn't think Jack Hughes will get 100 points in the next three years. Do you uh, think he will? <laughs> next three years? Oh, man. I mean, obviously, I've known him for a while and one of my best buddies. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he had over 100 next year. But, like, I hate saying this and putting expectations on him. Um, well, we've already just, clipped well that went good for Caulfield. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. But, uh, <laughs> like, he's just his skill level and skating. He's just so smart. Like, it's just a matter of time before I think he it's takes a bet it I, I It's a bet I, admi- I admittedly said maybe would have taken it back um, or, cha- or tried to change it a little bit right after I did it, which isn't a good feeling, but, but nonetheless, it's it, uh, a bet is a bet and, and it's about staying healthy and the devils suck. So we'll see. They score a lot. Though. He's an amazing player though. Goals. Yeah. I'm He's an that. amazing player. Um, I think the last question I want to ask you is, uh, is there any weird hobbies that you have that uh, maybe you're, you would be embarrassed to share with, uh, with our listeners? Is there anything you're doing with your free time there? I want to say uh, last time we talked about escape rooms. Was that you? Yep. Oh, yeah. In, no any, more escape other, rooms. In, in any other weird stuff you got going on there? Uh, I mean, this is about it, dude. This is pretty much what I do <laughs> every night. I just chill up here. Just rip, when rip, I texted rip Caulfield, bomb. he actually told me, busy. he goes, he loves sunsets. And then we do this thing while this guy's watch. Like, you legit, you're a sunset guy. Every night you're out there. He's looking for the compestular rays. <laughs> Every night I'm up here. I love it. Would be too. Well, buddy, we appreciate you coming on. Looking forward to watching you guys this year. It's nice. I mean, you, you get the 10 o'clock Ducks games being out east. It, it's, a, it's a good spot to be able to watch your team, and we appreciate you joining the show. So good luck this year. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Z. Good luck this year, buddy. Thanks again uh, to the dude himself, Trevor Zegers, for joining us. His interview was also brought to you by Peter Millar. I know Biz mentioned earlier in the episode, but it is the greatest golf gear of all time to wear. So I played golf Sunday this week. It was beautiful. I had a perfect Q-zip on. And like I mentioned, this time of year, the weather can get unpredictable. So you don't know if it's going to be warm or cold. It can change at the drop of a dime. So whether it's a little chilly in the morning or I need a breathable layer to protect me from the sun, I'm depending on Peter Millar's innovative lineup of lightweight vests and jackets. Fall golf is the best, and Peter Millar makes it even better. They are revolutionizing performance fabrics to provide weather-resistant layers that are lightweight, provide the right amount of warmth when you need it, and are ergonomically, ergonomically, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but ergonomically designed to move with you when you're on the course. Whether you're looking for a bold statement piece or a subtle classic look, there's something in the new lineup of the Crown Sport outerwear for every type of guy. Go to PeterMillar.com slash chicklets to explore the Crown Sport outerwear and the full range of Peter Millar apparel. So thank you to Zegris. Just just loving life, living on his, doing the interview from his roof deck, watching a sunset. I mean, talk about living. 
kid is something else. Love chat with him. He's just, he's the dude. Like you said, he's the Lebowski of the NHL. I uh, also want to send uh, congrats out to Matthew Perot. He also retired after 13 NHL seasons with four clubs playing 759 games. He's going to be working with TVA sports this season, but we like to give daps to all these guys who play a long time in the NHL. It's uh, definitely worthy accomplishment. We like to uh, tip our cap to those guys. So meanwhile, we got to tip our Tip oh, we gotta to... give him a little, little, little tummy sticks action. Head, head I would have thought he was on more than four teams. <laughs> no, he was in Winnipeg quite a while. Yeah, Started true. out with uh, Hershey in the American League. I mean, Washington, man, they had so many good drafts where they they just picked up guys who ended up having pretty lengthy careers. I mean, shout out to their scouting staff, but moved over to Winnipeg, and I mean, fuck, he was a consistent forty point guy yeah. there for four or five seasons, man. So a crafty little player. Uh, got a great career and uh, wish him the best, man. Great flow. I mean, you talk about uh, going from Zegers' Zieger, flow to talking about Perot. He had some of the some of the best quaff in the league for a while. What's TVA already? Is that where he's working now? I believe it's a. Is it a French language or a Quebec channel? I believe TVA okay. Sports. I it used to be sure. RDS, but it must be a, a different one, or maybe like the Sportsnet compared to the TSN in in, in Quebec. But who knows? All right. That's out of my that pay again, grade. Please? RDS, say that again. RDS. <laughs> I can't roll my tongue like you. Uh, the next not. talk, money, money, money. The Nate dog gets paid after helping the Abs win their first Stanley Cup in 21 years. Nathan McKinnon hit pay dirt and doubled the salary, signing an eight-year, $100.8 million extension that has an average annual value of $12.6 million dollars a full no-move clause, and will keep him in Colorado until 2031, a place he says he wants to stay forever. It also makes him the league's highest-paid player when the deal kicks in next year, 100 k more than McDavid. Uh, a little over $85 million will be paid in bonuses. Uh, just $15 million plus will be paid in base salary, but I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Owner's got to pay it anyways. Uh, the base salary is less than $1 million in all except for one year of the contract. That's a $9 million a year contract one year. Boys, does this number about we expected, Biz? I'll go to you first. Did you expect them to come in at 12 6, high or low, or about we expected? What, what oh, I think with where the cap's going, this is a very fair, fair deal for both sides. Um, I, I want to say McDavid signed his deal five years ago, and he's only making 100 grand more. And with what we know with the TV deals kicking in, and now that COVID's over and where the cap's going, great job to lock him in for, for this period of time. Uh, I'm going to put my differences aside with Nate. You know, we mentioned last year after he lost his mind and the wires crossed he gave my aunt aunt marcia the finger in the front row but credit where it's due i mean you i hate to compare to compare it to me going zero dark 30 uh, on the golf course on hole 17 and 18 wit but i would probably compare that to what he did last season we know he went no sugar we know that he kind of separated all the noise from the outside and really dug deep after that embarrassing performance they had at Vegas the year before he went full Crosby mode and earned every goddamn cent. And I would say will at least put another Stanley cup to his name with that core group blocked in. So I could not be happier for the Nate dog. Uh, he, 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 he's that team's heartbeat. I know Landis Cog's the captain, but I bet you Landy's the captain because he would even be able to tell you that that he's aware that Nate Dog is the heartbeat towards the team. Everybody follows him. He's the guy in practice, fucking stepping up and 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 getting the pace going. And uh, he is uh, he's worth every cent, my my friend. Yeah, we heard we heard that he he yells at Makar sometimes at intermission. So it's like yeah. if you're yelling at that guy, you're yeah. truly you're a competitive guy. lunatic, which yeah. I think McKinnon is. And you said it perfectly. No surprise. Um, also, it, it makes sense that he would be the player he is, become the highest paid player in the league after having what I think was one of the greatest uh, contract bargains in league history over the past six years, Yeah, uh, especially over the past three or four when he really changed, um, you know, took took that other step to true superstar. And and. This team now, I mean, what is it? He's locked in. Makar's locked in. Rontanen's locked in. Uh, 
Gerard's locked in, but he could end up kind of being a trade a trade piece at some point. They got to get that Byram signed in in the near future. Um, who else is? Oh, Nichushkin, oh Landeskog. Nichushkin, Landeskog. Landeskog. locked in after yeah. they got him in the phenomenal trade with Montreal. He was a big part. So this team is now. I said they're not going to win this year because the outfits those four frigging guys wore against the four play team. They looked <laughs> horrific. But after that, they might win a couple more. They're just going to take a year off. I. I I do think that it, it makes total sense to try to lock guys up now at a deal that could end up looking like another bargain. If the cap truly does go bananas and jumps to 95 million in two, three years, which I mean, you hear rumblings like it, it, it's like where there's smoke, there's fire in terms of how well the league is doing and how much this cap could jump up in the next few years. All of a sudden, that's not too bad right now. I think he's got 15 percent of the of the team's um, salary yeah. cap is, is with him. But if it but- changes, I mean. All of a sudden, you get the, not, one of the top players in the league uh, making he, money that that isn't crippling your team's cap. No, and by the time we're it, it, probably halfway through the deal, all of a sudden it's looking at like maybe twelve percent of the team's cap. Where I don't know, I don't think we need to segue it now. But one of the topics of conversation at Leafs training camp, they're already with two years left on his deal, asking Austin, "Oh, sign this, buddy." I, I could see that kid in two years making sixteen million a year with how yeah. much it's going to quickly jump. Because even at 90, if the cap's 90 million, you could get 18 million from your team. 20% is the rule of your team's cap uh, that you can make in the NHL. And I, I, like I said, I think that this is not only a bargain, but a, a well-deserved amount of money for a guy who, like you said, Whit, that, that'll go down, I believe, is the biggest, best bargain deal in NHL history that he was on for after his initial entry-level contract. Because you keep river dancing like that, and the cap might go up to 150 million because everybody's going to be tuning into TNT, all that rating, get oh, that ad yeah. money coming in. Well, that well, okay. So the the TV money and, and all that coming in is a, a big reason why it's going to jump up. So and and of course with the, the the revenue from the gate that they lost that the players had to make up for the for, for the couple of years there. So I don't know how long till it's at 100 million, but I would say 2028, 29, I could see the cap being at 100 million. Good. The more the merrier. But you, ju- you just mentioned Austin, so you might as well go there. After his deal, McKinnon's deal, everybody want to talk about Austin, even though he's still got two years left. Uh, he did say, I consider it home now in regards to Toronto. Uh, his no-move clause kicks in July 1st of 23, which is also the same day he can officially sign an extension. So, you know, if you just said, if Nate's getting 12-6, you'd think Matthew's getting over 14. We'll keep an eye on that. That's some fucking insane money if that's the case. Well-deserved. Uh, but his GM, Kyle Dubas, is in the news for a similar reason, an extension, but because he's not getting one. Uh, Dubas is not getting an extension as he enters the final season of his current deal, giving him what's known as lame duck status in most industries. This could change, of course. Uh, since he took over in May of 18, the Leafs own the NHL's fifth most wins, third most regulation wins, fifth best goal differential, and they've registered the two top regular seasons measured by points percentage in franchise history. You know, but this is a results-driven business, and the Leafs haven't seen a second round since Cradelli was in grade school, for real. And they've lost lost seven straight elimination games on Dubas's watch. But I took a look at the goal goals against the average, all the goal numbers. That's everyone blames all well, the goalie stunk, the goalie stunk. But you know, Freddie back in 2019, 922 save percentage. Freddie in 20, 936. Campbell in 21, 934. And Campbell struggled last year with a 901. So. You know, if Dubas doesn't get to the second round, what is his job actually in jeopardy this year? Or will they kind of look past the goalie aspect of things, you think? I would say yes. I, I, I'll say this. Wh- why would you give him an extension right now? They, yeah, good team. You list off the numbers. You lift off, list off the advanced stats. You list off the wins pipe. They haven't won a round in the playoffs. And it's the players who ultimately get it done. But who's going to eat it first if they can't do it again this year? It's the GM. You have to switch who's making all these decisions, who's deciding on the goaltending. And whether it's they do get great goaltending this year from Murray or if they don't, it's still on the GM in the end. Because this guy, as much as making them a contender and Biz thinks they're going to win three Stanley Cups in a row, they haven't done anything since he got there. So why would why would you give him an extension in that market? Hey, they well, they just removed the curse. Chara retired. There's no current players that the Leafs have beaten playoffs. The curse is done. As far as far as him not getting an extension, I think he was more just annoyed that it became a topic of conversation where he's like, listen, like he, he he'll probably come at you with the same thing that it's a results 
it's a results industry and they haven't provided any results come playoff time. Buddy, if, if they do it this year, he's going to probably be one of the highest paid GMs. And guys, it's not for a lack of effort either. Like if you were to want to pick a GM to, to, to run your team, the, if he doesn't resign with the Leafs because they don't have success, I would imagine that he has a GM position right away because he's the type of guy that's going to get up in the morning and he eats, breathes, and sleeps it. And he cares. He cares about his, his players. His players care about him. So I, 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 I you think, think he that, understands it. You think he's fuck, like, oh, I don't, I don't blame him. Yeah, I think that he likes the competition, and he, why, why would he even want to sign a contract now without having any results? When he's like, well, fuck, he hasn't done anything. If, if, if they go to the conference finals this year and they have a good run, he's probably looking at a million more than he was originally going to sign for. I think he's done an excellent job in, 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 in creating a winning team. They haven't. They, last year was the first time they put up a respectable effort in playoff against a team that, in our, in our opinion, with with all the experience that they had, beat them. If they were to do exactly what they did last year, regular season wise, and then end up losing in Game Seven against a, a, another type of contender, I'd still be here saying sign Dubas to a one year deal to see if he can actually do it again. I wouldn't say if give they them lose a, in the first round again. If if I just said if they lost next year in the first round in the exact same result in which happened last year, I would be like, hey, here's one more year. Do you want to try to run it in Matthew's last year of his contract? Because that would be the last year of his deal. Let let him at least see out what he did, right? Because if you look back on, on the big moves that were made by Kyle Dubas, that that will be the 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The, the end-all be-all will be the fact that he got bent over in contract negotiations between Marner and Matthews, not saying that they haven't played up to what the, they're, they're being paid right now because we both saw what Mass, or we all saw what Matthews did last year. He earned every cent, right? But in, in the hockey world, it's hard justifying paying guys that much money unless they're proven. The guys like the SIDS or even now that McKinnon's got his money. No, if, if McKinnon wouldn't have a cup and then he would have got his money and then put his team in a little bit of cap trouble, given the number he's making, everybody would be bitching. But because he's won, they're saying, well, he, he earned every cent, fucking let it be, right? And then the last thing being the, the, the Tavares deal. Why couldn't they go get maybe that, you know, another great top four defenseman that would help out alleviate stress on goaltending and even have maybe enough money to go pick goaltending. That's 11 million bucks right there. That could go to a top four defenseman and a, and a obviously look, I mean, what Kadri just get as, as one of the best second line center free agents in, in, in the national hockey league, what he signed for 7 million a year. There you go. So that those, those are, but if he's able to have success with those pieces and, and make it work, whether this year or next year, after the after Matthews is gone, or after the last year of his deal, if he still hasn't got all the first round, see you later. The Kyle Dubas experiment is out, but I wouldn't write him off if they don't get over the first round this year. I think you got to let him I see. Think you're fucking crazy. Where, who? But I, but I, because I don't think that there would be a good enough GM right now to replace him. The other argument that people use too, guys, is that to to to, to contradict myself is well, Toronto also has twice the amount of resources as most of the teams in the league based on budget. They have the biggest analytics crew. They got the best goalie coaches. They got the fucking practice rink with the best fucking nutritionist. They got the so, best Zamboni driver. They goalies got the best Zam beat them. them. All of it, all of it, right. Best puck bunnies. They got it all guys. They got it all. So, but, but to, to summarize, I don't think that he cares as much that he gets to go into this year, proving what, what he's assembled. And I think that they're going to end up doing more than they have in the past. I think the curse is over. Yeah, I know. You've but, made that clear for a long time now. Uh, I would, I, I, if I'm a Maple Leafs fan um, and Matthews goes into his final season, it would be the next season without an extension that he could sign. That That's panic time. That, that's panic time. I, I, I think as a Leafs fan, if you don't see him signing an extension and then playing the last year of his deal with his new deal already set in stone the way McKinnon is doing, I think it's a full-blown panic. I, I, I'm almost curious to know what's going on on the inside in a sense of like, because then if he was, if he were to sign an extension, he has control on what ends up happening and what's given to math. Yep, so, true. So I, I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're making sure all of it aligns properly. And, uh, and they could figure out the plan moving forward. All right, what do you think? You think regardless of situation, if they lose in the first round this year, and obviously if they miss playoffs, he's gone? 
I mean, if the goaltender flops, I, I, they got to take a long look at it. It's such a key position. I mean, you know, for, like I said, Freddie played good for those first two years. Campbell was great that first year. He didn't do so good last year. But, I mean, if this is an, another fucking team that falls on its face because of the goaltender, man, I, I don't know. Do you, do you consider all the good he did on one side uh, and just offset the bad goaltending aspect? I don't think they even know. I think they're going to wait and see how the year plays out. But, I mean, Merles. you know. I think it's 50 50. I was going to ask Merles. What do you think? Yeah, I would say if I own the Leafs, I would tell him, I don't care what the team does this year in the playoffs. You get Austin Matthews signed for the next 10 years and we'll give you a new contract because I'm hearing a lot of little birdies tell me Austin Matthews is heading west 100%. That's once what his I keep hearing that he's, going, that he's going to LA. So, yeah, uh, that's what I'm know. hearing. I don't know. So, I would get him, if you can get him signed, Kyle, then you get a contract too. Does, does it feel like there might be a bit of a shift? And I know COVID had something to do with it, but I don't think it really does anymore about Americans maybe not wanting to play in Canada as much as they used to, more, more for the taxes than anything else. Does it feel like there's a shift here, guys? Well, he'd be going to California. I mean, that's what the rumor is. So he's going to be ding, getting dinged the same. Uh, I, I, I was wondering this too. Do you guys think he would do more advertising dollars-wise if he was playing in LA than he would Toronto in the hockey Toronto. world? Toronto's. That's what I mean. I mean, the, the, the Canadian dollar hurts that, but... But L.A., like, how much actual advertisement is there for NHL players in L.A., right? It's like, I, I don't see I don't see a ton being there for him. I mean, although he's the, one of the most marketable players in the league. That's he what, just feels I would feel, like a put California it this way, I feel like the Rangers, though. he could probably get more money off ice as a Ranger than a yeah. King. All right. He likes going to Vegas for those UFC fights. He likes oh, yeah, being yeah, with yeah, the yeah. actors, that, the musicians. He likes going to the, the second style. round. He probably wants to go to the second yeah. round. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I go. think uh, if I, I think I, I would be 50-50 on whether he's staying or leaving because I think that right now he loves his situation in Toronto and he ha is viewed as a hockey god and he's playing in the, in, the, in the biggest market. But two years is a lot of time to have to deal with Toronto media if you're not having any – playoff success so i think his mood could completely change in that regard but i would say as of right now my, i would lean towards he's staying a toronto maple leaf all right another big name who's probably going to be staying put uh the islanders matthew bazal he's in the last year of a three-year 21 million dollar deal uh he'll be a 26 year old restricted free agent when the deal expires uh he's been eligible to sign an extension since last july but nothing nothing yet lou had said without question he wants him there long term. He says he's Basel's biggest fan. And Basel said, hopefully there's still three weeks before the season and we can hammer something out. If not, I'm not really worried about it just because my heart's here and I know that we'll get something fair and something both sides will be happy about. So it doesn't appear to be a major concern on either side. Seems like it's you know going to work itself out. Uh, what would you expect him to come in at a number, Admirals? Yeah, I love, I love Barzell's game. Um, I, I don't see him staying there. I don't think... Oh, wow. uh, I don't, I don't see him as a lifelong Islander. I feel like he wants to get somewhere a little I, more. I, uh, I would have, I would have said that same thing, yeah. Merles, but I want to see yeah, what happens. Those with quotes this, were pretty. I, I, I want to see what happens with the new coach. It seems like he's, he, he's going to be happy there. And I think that the new coach will maybe be him a little bit more, make him uh or let him be, excuse me, a little bit more creative offensively. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I feel like there was a, you know, there was a, 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 a something holding power him back struggle. a little. Yeah, there was a bit yeah. of a power power struggle, and he wants to be creative. And and they got a lot of offensive guys on that team. I bet you he signs a a, a great team friendly deal deal with the Islanders. I don't think he's going anywhere long term. Well, I he was think, in a he was in a biz does BC right? Did I see that? No, recently? he was in the commercial. He was in one of the, in the commercials. commercials. Okay, so you might have the inside there. No, because 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 deep down, I want to see some major drama and Lou not get what he wants, but he's going to get what he wants. That's a, <laughs> he, he, he always crushes my heart. He remained patient all off season. He was, you know, sipping his Aperol spritz in the in, in the south of France, not getting any deals done. But this is going to be the cherry on top. He, he's so patient. He, he's the Warren Buffett of NHL GMs. He'll just it's the long game for Lou. And he's going to end up there. He's probably going to sign right before the fucking season. And then they're going to go off to the final, finals and win a Stanley Cup. And we're all going to be miserable here on the podcast. Well, I'd be pumped. I hate the Rangers. I'm an Islanders guy now. I think I picked him to win it last year. Uh, as good of a coach as Trotz is, and everywhere he goes, he has success. But 
Barzal, if he if he has to hear you got to dump it in one more time, he's probably going to snap. So I'm guessing this coach is like, all right, bud, you can get over the blue line and make some plays because there had to be moments over the past few seasons when he was straight up losing his mind, having to chip in, chip it in and go get it. Yeah, he doesn't care about the neutral zone trap. He can just no, no. no. He wants to toe drag. He, he wants, wants to, to make pull people up, look the foolish guy. out there. Yeah. He wants to break some ankles. They got a ton of guys signed, too. They only have $2.3 million in cap room right now. Valamov's $5 million might come off after next season. He's UFA after the coming season. A few other deals coming off, but they probably have to move a little money around to sign him long term. But uh, this is a weird thing. The NHLPA changed the language of agent regulations. Uh, effective August, October 1st, agents may face discipline if NHLPA decides they have provided misleading info about the structure and operation of the NHLPA. The new language and regulation says agents owe, quote, a duty of loyalty, end quote, to the NHLPA. Of course, people on Twitter try to blame Alan Walsh, and he replied, <laughs> uh, I've been the most public supporter of the NHLPA within the agent community. These new regulations may be targeted at certain previous agent behavior, none of it having to do with me or AP. Uh, to, guys, do agents owe a duty of loyalty to the union? I mean, I know they do to the players, but that's that- uh, Klingberg bitching about his guy. Uh, all right. Can you layman term explain maybe what that even means? It's it, they're basically the sounds like the union is telling the agents like you guys have to be loyal to us. You have a duty of loyalty to us, the union. Now, do you mean as almost like as a body? Hey, bud, you like. can't. Hey, bud, you can't, to his client. You can't take that deal. It's going to screw over the other guys playing in the NHL like that kind of what it says it said uh the, if the nhlp decides they provided misleading info about the structure okay. and operation about the nhlp so it almost sounds like the agents might be bullshitting their clients not so much about how, what they should or shouldn't take just about how things work and if they hear that they're, they're full, you know giving them shit or whatever then they would be an arbitration process to discipline the agent probably but- just an agent listening to our podcast trying to pat, put the information onto his he's client. like dude biz said the cap's going up to 100 million next year don't take that <laughs> but I thought it was an interesting question, though. As an agent, is you know, yeah, yeah, your loyalties to your player, but does that extend to the union because the players in the union? I thought it was kind of an interesting question. I my mind is in a fucking pretzel yeah. right now. All right, well, move I thought right. agents had to be certified by the NHLPA. I remember well, that's that, how it used to be. No, the, these are for the certified agents, but apparently yeah. some of them are doing some funny stuff telling clients. They're basically they're just basically uncertified. MP. They're basically trying to get a make sure that no agents are like, hey, the PA's fucking you over right now. And an agent tells a player that over and over. The player wants to believe it. And in the end, the PA is probably saying he's completely incorrect. You can't be spreading false rumors and lies about yeah. our union. Now, that's me just guessing. But I'll say if you're an agent, your one job is to look out the, for the best interests of your client and clients. So you can't really care about what any other guy and his team's doing, what the GM's saying. It's like, we are looking to get you as much money as humanly possible because then after when you make another 80 million post career on TV, <laughs> you'll be that much richer. No prisoners. I like the wit. I like the way wit does business here. Right. Am I, am I wrong? No, not no. Do you want your agent? Like, Oh, actually, no, let's try to save a couple bucks for the team and the PA biz. Let's just take your six hundred well, uh, grand those, qualifying uh, offer again. Getting those I mean, Hugo Boss golf shirts at the team or the, I mean, the NHLPA office that are walking right. out with like sixteen <laughs> duffel bags. Well, that's how uh, I would do my Christmas. Who are these shopping. guys? Oh, they're carrying the bags for me. <laughs> I think you know the only people with a do- duty of loyalty to unions are dues paying union members, right? Not their agents. Well, you don't want any misinformation because next thing you know, Donald Fair will be getting sucker punched like that flight attendant for not letting the the guy and uh, coach. Oh. Use well, the, the first class bathroom. Did you see that clip? Yeah. Did you guys fucked. see the clip? Stude, the guy must have been a drunk asshole. I'll, I'll explain it here if you hadn't seen the video. Just some idiot wanted to use the first class bathroom. I mean, anybody on a plane knows you can't use it. And sorry, uh, Stu, bud, the, stay the, back the, there. The flight attendant said no, and the, the guy waited from the turn. He just fucking blasted him in the back of the head. One of the worst things you could do is punch him in the back of the head. Apparently, a, a the rest of the people on the plane, you know, tackled the guy, sat him down. Now, I, I was asking you guys in the outline, would you would you guys be the, willing to, like, jump on some asshole on a plane if he's pulling a stunt like that? Be, I mean, the, hey, I'll, I'll be it. second or third guy in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my luck would be some I'll lefty, my some peanuts. little guy. He's a lefty, knocks me out. That's the video. I'll throw my peanuts at him, but I'm watching my movie. I'm keeping my earphones. <laughs> hey, but let me I'll ask say, you I'll say, go this, ahead. Though. You can use the bathroom. Hey, bro. let me ask you this. 
you don't think that if there's five people pile up and it's one of those planes where there's a bathroom at the back and then there's at the front and you're like the third seat to the front and nobody's using the pisser in the first class, you can't just let the guy go take a I piss. think that's bullshit. I think you're it is. Saying let him go, right? Yeah, like, and I'm a first class guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting up there. You let him come up. Let him get a seat. Let him get a sense of how we're living up here. You can use our Just don't crunch ready. one in the front. Just, you can't... Yeah, no shit's allowed. No oh. shit's allowed. <laughs> you take a shit, you're a savage. Like the bus and the I... miners. No shit oh. allowed. Hundred dollar fine. Oh Oof. my god. I, oh, I so, mean, you know, you know how many poops I held in on the bus, folks. <laughs> It would be pretty cool though to I like, shit in a Gatorade bottle once. No, <laughs> no. no. I'm kidding, boys. Come oh, on. Imagine yeah, just shoving no. it right up your hoop and just oh, clean shit right you. in the <laughs> oh. So if that if the guy who punched the flight attendant had like no prize, what, what kind of sentence should he get? Like a major fine, 30 days. I mean, because on the airplane, man, you got like so many people act uncivilized now. Like I think you should get a little extra, maybe 10% more of a of a fine. If there's a poor flight a attendant that gets sucker punch in the back of the head by you. You should serve 30 days in jail. 30? And like, sus be from flying. No, you're not allowed to fly for a few years or something like that. Yeah. No. I, I, I think the flight attendant, flight, flight attendant flight yeah. attendant should should be able to give the guy a golden shower. And the the the, the perpetrator, the guy what who if he likes him, it though, has to drink um a liter. No, no, not a liter. 350 mils of the the blue water that's inside the toilet in the first class. Oh, you just immediately like <laughs> disappear like the thanos snap the, the, like, the oh what happened to him? Uh, he drank Powerade. that blue stuff <laughs> did, and biz did you see that other clip i put right below that um if people were boarding the southwest flight to hawaii and there was a ukulele on every seat and they were given ukulele lessons for the flight to hawaii is that nightmare fuel or fun we'll go to you first Merles. with that just like that's a long the flight plane? yeah that's way too long of a flight if, if it's for an hour like a a scheduled one hour we're going to do this cool it breaks up the trip but if anybody can just rip it the whole time i know that's a no for me yeah unless you get I jack mean, johnson in in the, in the first class picking it up and playing tunes the whole flight i'm i'm good that, yeah. that's a that's a straight up belushi and animal house smashing up <laughs> if, if, ten, if ten fey was in first class and they had the ukuleles <laughs> then i would be okay with it wit yeah, what'd you okay. think did you listen to some of their music I listened to the one that uh, has been played the most on Spotify, which is called Isn't Ever a Day by Ten Fei. I enjoyed it. It sounds exactly like The National. Uh, I've heard a couple of songs by The National, and so the guy sounds very similar. Yeah, I, I, I haven't listened to an album or anything, but I, I, I was down with that one song. Um, and if, if the only time it's okay to me, I know I said it's very bad, you should go to jail. If the flight attendant is the one that's continuing to make the ukulele lesson go longer and longer, then you can sucker punch one of them. Guillotine. Full guillotine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Airplane stuff. I ain't going to bring up the dogs. Don't worry. Uh, We mentioned that the season is going to open in Prague this year. Well, Russian players who are scheduled to participate in NHL games in Prague will not be welcomed by the Czech government because of its stance on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, it does sound like the league is working behind the scenes on some type of resolution. Uh, Russian forward Yakov Trenin plays for the Preds, while uh, Evgeny Svechnikov, the other one, and left wing uh, Alexander Barabanov play for San Jose. Uh, defenseman Nikolai Knizhov is injured. Uh, Gia Mike Gray said either we all go or no one goes. I'm a pretty firm believer that we're a team here. We're a group. It's not the players' fault. They didn't do anything wrong, so I don't think they should be punished for it. We stand with them, and we're all together as one in here. Um, so um, it sounds like, again, the NHL will resolve this, but you guys ever have a situation at any legal level where like the team had to maybe forfeit because a couple guys were going to get left out at any level. No, any, any level and, and, all, no? I, and I think it's fair to mention too, like just given with what's going on over there, like I talked to my buddies and, and, and about the, cause they're, they're a lot more educated in it than I am, but because of the energy prices and like Eastern Europeans might have a long winter ahead as far as paying like 10 to 20 uh times the amount they normally pay to heat their homes so i think that just given the 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 craziness and the bitterness towards like eastern european eastern european towards russia it's probably just for the safety of the players so as far as greer saying we're a team and we're sticking up for our players absolutely like these kids have no control over what the fuck's going on so hopefully they could think of a, a resolution and get those guys over there and just maybe get them the 
the, the protection if they end up even needing it at all, just because there's a few wackos out there that don't look at it that the way that we look at it. Right. It's like, well, obviously these people have no involvement in it, but say that to a, to, to somebody who's, who might not have heat all winter or who's had a long history of, you know, Czech Republic was behind, was a part of like the, the iron curtain. Right. I mean, there's probably hatred towards Russia. Yeah. To begin no, with, uh, not to mention, that scumbag Putin's now calling on the citizens to go to the front line. Do you see the most Googled thing in Russia is how to break your own arm? People are trying to get out of having to get called to fucking die for Russia. So Mike Greer is an ultimate team guy. Uh, that's no surprise whatsoever. Kind of sucks. This is the beginning of his run as GM. He has to deal with this. Uh, but he's he's made it quite clear that if those guys aren't allowed, they won't be there. And I don't blame him. Yeah, I, I would suppose they'll probably just get some waivers similar like what happened with the pandemic stuff. Like, you just basically give them a waiver. They're NHL guys. What are they going to do? Lose all that money from not having two two teams, I mean, two games in their neighborhood. So we'll keep an eye on it, as always. I did mention off the top, camp has opened. Uh, they officially opened for the 22-23 season. Exhibition games got underway Saturday. Uh, basically, I think it's a no news, good news thing at this time of year, guys. You basically want some young kids to maybe make the team and hope for nobody to get hurt. Uh, otherwise, there's been a few more fights, I think, than usual. I, I know people like fights. I like fights, but sometimes I watch them now during this time of year. Do you guys still think guys are winning jobs via fights like they were, say, 20 years ago, Biz? I think that there are some teams who lack toughness are looking to see if there's a guy who's just an average player who's willing to take on that role because throughout the course of a course of a season, you're going to have some teams come in and, and try to bully you around. That's, that's why I said, I said, I know the Coyotes aren't going to be very good, but I hope they get some toughness around the team. So at least the guys who are trying to, you know, who are going to be here for a while, like the Kells and, and, and the other skilled players, um, Schmaltz, get them some protection so they can free and wheel. And if, People try to rough them up. Just fucking send the good squad out there. So sh uh, short answer, R.A., absolutely. And I still I think, think that so. It's I think so, too. Not to, Sorry to cut you off. There. No, you're think, good, buddy. I think that if you can get a guy that comes into camp, R.A., and he could skate and he can move, and then all of a sudden he's, like, punching people's head in. He's not just going out there and fighting, and he's slow and the old school type, type fighter. If, if this guy's flying around hitting people and then has no problem dropping the gloves and he's doing well in camp, that's, that's the type of player, like, this guy could actually change. It's our actually line. crazy how many of those jobs are probably available year to year. There's, there's none of them lineup. anymore. Well, but I'm saying is like when you go into camp every year, if you're just kind of like, there's probably usually in some cases, probably five or six jobs probably in, in on the bottom line for some teams where it's like, we could have any guy filling this role. And the guy who's willing to, to stand out and do the other intangibles, whether it's, you know, be a good teammate, throw, throw all the extra hits. If anybody on the ice takes a liberty with one of his teammates when he's out there, he's the fucking first guy in there. He's always protecting his goalie. And also when, when, when games, when there's, when there's no emotion, like I, I always found like in, in, in Vancouver, and this might not be a good example because he is getting slower and maybe not much of much more of an impact, maybe go back towards his Dallas days, but Antoine Roussel, every game, he was just making himself a factor by, by whether it was, he was, you know, scoring a goal, making a nice play or, or being annoying as fuck when his team were down. So you, you're dragging your, your teammates into the fight. And I think that, I think that fighting is kind of a little bit more on the upswing and becoming more, more relevant again. Cause you know, we kind of always go through these waves, whether how the media is picking on what they're picking on when they went hard on the concussion thing, it feels like everybody was like, Oh, in junior, you can only fight three times now. And now once you fight past three times, we're going to shoot you in a rocket to Mars. <laughs> it will. Yeah. But it, it ain't changing that way at the NHL level. And I still think that it's relevant and it's going to, it's going to keep going up. I saw that Roussel's uh, at camp with the Flyers. He got lit up. Uh, I think it was Connor Carrick on the Bruins the other night. Big time hit at center ice. But he's still kicking around trying to find a job with the Flyers for, for torts. Speaking That's of the, the Flyers, last spot, I That's would go his guy. for a PTO. That's his guy. You know he's camp. Camp. You're like, Ports hey, want to go, wanna go on a PTO? <laughs> uh, yeah. You're like, where? Uh, Philly. Uh, anything in the cave? Chell over? <laughs> By the way, I, I, I heard from a Philly player. They had an hour practice. They had to go and work out after the practice and then put the sweaty gear oh. right back on to go out and skate Come after on. the workout. So I think one crew got to do 
practice, skate, then take it off, and then you're in your gym clothes. But the one crew had to go work out and then throw all the wet gear back on to go back up there. Oh, my God. You couldn't pay me. <laughs> That's why I mean, Johnny you didn't give sign me the there. McKinnon money. I don't care. No. Yeah. I couldn't do it. No, Johnny heard that was in the, the plan for, for, for the preseason bag skates, and he said, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm fucking taking Imagine my Imagine somebody offered you $100 million to the McKinnon contract. This is like, no thanks. No, no thanks. So I'm going to make 120 million off ice on TNT. So I bet I'm you, I bet you, Torts had 75 clips of Roussel and his spank bank on his laptop, just dumping it in, snowing the goalie, spearing banging someone. away, spearing people, you know, squirting water bottles off the bench at guys. So you know, you know that's why you got the PTO there, all right. And there was that picture we put on the uh, Chicklets account. Look, like some look, someone got hit by a poison dot right in front of Torts. They're just dead to the world right in front of him after getting skated for the 17th time. And then that other picture we shared, or I shared on my Twitter, it was last year's camp was jam-packed versus this year's, like, look like 10% of the people there. So Philly, Philly not you too You mean happy. like the Obama and Trump inaugurations? <laughs> Yeah, I guess you could say that. Moving right <laughs> along. Uh, the team also got more bad news. We were talking about uh, Ryan Ellis a couple weeks ago. He's not expected to play this season due to a core region issue. I guess there's a multiple problems he's got down there. Described as a very complicated injury. And Sean Couturier is week to week with his back issue. Uh, oh, you got to feel God. awful for both those guys. A couple of Warriors, especially Ellis. He went there hoping to you know, get the ball rolling on, on a new stop in his career. And it's just been a, a tough start for him so and, far. And so. it's crazy because you cannot even get an answer of what the injury is. So I know based on how complicated he is, it, it, the whole the whole situation is, it's it's just odd because even fans don't even know what's wrong. They just know that, that what would be their best D-man can't even play. Sucks. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Like they named six, like uh, the adductor muscle. There's like a, five different muscles. It's just very complicated medical issue you can read about. But I'm not the doctor, so uh, I'd say probably the biggest, fucking. the biggest camp story. I'd say I know we talked about him last week, but Jason Robertson, he's missing the start of Dallas Stars camp because the budding superstar and the team haven't been able to hammer out a deal for the play driving winger that averages just under a point per game in his brief career. Like we said, this kid's special. He is RFA, and he's likely looking to get comparable deals to what he's seen from other guys. You know, $8 million a year, probably reasonable. Yep. Uh, GM Jim Nill and the Stars say they're open to a long-term or a bridge deal. They got about 7 or $8 million to work with, which kind of contradicts the feelings of his owner, who was on with Cam and Strick a while ago, saying he doesn't think the guy should get that money right away. But, guys, just how detri- detrimental is it for a guy who misses a portion of camp? Does it matter how long? Does it matter who it is, how skilled they are? Uh- Biz, go to you first. Uh, well, I would say that he's, we, we use the term uh, hockey nerd. I mean, he's so invested into his game. He's doing stuff all summer long and, and, and he'll keep up in shape and with the training regimen. So no, that doesn't, doesn't scare me at all. I just, I understand it from his position. He's looking at all these other guys around the league, not signing bridge deals and getting these bags after accomplishing less than what he's accomplished so far. I mean, he's almost basically at two years proven. You know, he came, I think he came up like a, a little bit after the start of the season in year one and just fucking lit the lamp, continued it last year. He completely drives their offense when he's not in their lineup. It, 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 and there was, a, I think, a, a small portion of it last year where he was injured. Their offense dried up. But unfortunately for him, his situation, the organization he's in, that's not their reality. You have an owner right now who's saying we're fucked for the time being because we got these two massive deals that you gave out. Now I'm looking down the barrel of, of handing out another one of those when, when the first two didn't work out. So maybe the lack of trust in the GM. I mean, he did sign a one-year extension, so I'm sure he's going to give him that year to try to fix this mess. Fortunately for Nil, uh, the goalie was willing to take a bridge deal. But – I, I agree with Robinson. Like I, but, 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 it, but in the same breath though, RA, you have a list of how much this buyout would impact the Dallas stars. They can't buy these two guys out. They're stuck with these contracts. They got, yeah, well, was that a tweet RA that you showed us? Yeah. You're going to read it, break it down RA oh, for everybody nuts. listening. It ain't, it ain't as easy as just getting rid of I don't of even think it's possible. And- no, it's going to cost them more. Yeah, it is impossible. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull, pull up the thing right here. There it is. I'm going to get the guy's name. Dr. Mantis Toboggan, longtime follower. Uh, basically, let's see, both contracts are also bioproof. We're talking about Ben and Sagan. Buying out Ben would carry a cap hit of $8.83 million each season until 2025, which is when Ben's contract expires, and then 333333 for three seasons after that. 
Sagan's buyout would carry a cap hit of five point seven million in twenty twenty. I'm sorry, 22, 23, 7.75 million in 23, 24, almost 8 million in 24, 25, and about 9.7 million in the final two seasons through 2027 when his deal expires. There would also be a cap hit of 853,000 for the five years after that through 2032. So it's, yeah, they're, they're, they're bio proof, basically. If they buy them out, they're, they're doing them no this is a, favor. This is even uglier than the Minnesota situation. And we thought oh, that, yeah. that was ugly. And, and, and with basically no end in sight, because then you're telling me for the first, let's say Robertson does get that eight, eight and a half million bucks a year for the next eight. You're talking about half the length of that contract where they're, they have two other guys on the team making what those guys are making. Making more. <laughs> right. And it's... I, I I think that if there's one guy who could get his game back, it's got to be Sagan. He's had a couple injury-riddled seasons coming off of some serious ones, so you hope he can get back to the form he was in. Ben just he's just so, like you know he's he's a little bit older, and and I think that he's just he ain't gonna get any faster. So you basically have a, a third line center making ten million. If you can get Sagan getting back to close to a point a game. That's your only hope in, in, in having some su- success moving forward. But there's no way they can do it with those two anchor contracts if what they're going to provide is what they have over the last two years. If they get Robertson signed, I still don't know if they're going to finish top three in their division or as a lottery team. Like, that, that team is – Ottinger is their one hope, how amazing he was in the playoffs and his future. It's like, all right, they have a chance, but – they are the they are probably the number one team in my mind in terms of like I have no clue how this season's gonna go. Same here, buddy. Same here. Uh new devil, New Jersey Devil, Andre Palat. He gave uh Dawson Mercer uh is it Hublot watch? Is that how you say it? Hublot. Hublot, Hublot watch for the number 18 jersey. Where does that compare to a Rolex? A Hublot? It's I not, think they're not, nicer, doesn't. Nobis. No, no, they don't compare. I think once you buy it, you're you're looking at about uh I think you can get deals on them. Uh, much like you could a Breitling, maybe not the the same percentage. But wait, as soon as they you, don't compare as in what? Sorry, I bet is uh, Rolex as soon as way you better. Drive it off the lot, the resale isn't as good. The Ro- Rolex does a good job in, in in keeping their system where they only make so many of them. So most of the time, you're buying a Rolex, it's going to at least maintain the same price you bought it for, if not maybe slightly improve over time, unless you're really buying the wrong one. But uh, just just as far as limited quantity, and I don't think Hublots are are nearly as good a watch, like a good of a, a good as a make. I, I was kind of surprised. I mean, two time Stanley Cup champ, long veteran of the league comes over. Mercer, you know, he played one year, had a great season, but thought it might be one of those here, just have it. But you know, the young buck was like, no, 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 I'll take I'll take a watch. But hey, but hey, but but. Everything aside, a very, very nice gesture. I would have just went with the Rolex side. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was one of Palat's old ones he didn't want anymore. Well, how much am I going to get now from McKinnon for my 29 that he signs for $12 million? Ah, I didn't I, get any offers. He's like, oh, you're a one. fan who put your name on your jersey. <laughs> nice, dude. That's cool. Nice to meet you. You want a picture? Uh, a couple of deals that happened. Let's see. Uh, Rangers traded defenseman Nils Lundqvist to Dallas. He wasn't particularly happy with his role. Probably wasn't going to get too far up in the lineup. Uh, Rangers took him 28th overall in 2018. Uh, he had four points in 25 games with the Rangers, but he's a right shot D. He's probably not going to pass Fox or Trouber anytime soon. So, uh, the Rangers got a conditional first in 23 and a conditional fourth in 25. Uh, the 22-year-old was heading to the second year of his ELC. And uh, the Buffalo Sabres uh, signed general manager Kevin Adams to a multi-year contract extension after he seemingly fixed many of the issues for this team. He hired Don Granado after years of a revol- revolving door in the coach's office, and obviously team loved this guy. He turned RFA Sam Reinhardt and into Devon Levi and the 28th overall pick on the last uh, draft. Let's see, turned Rasmus Ristolainen into a first, second, and a sixth. And he got a nice return for Eichel. You know, Tuck Krebs, 16th overall, and a second and 23. And this is his first time as a GM. I know we probably made some jokes, and a lot of other people had things to say, but this team is certainly in a much better place than they were before Kevin Adams. So hats off to what he's done, a well-earned extension. Merle Jara saved his guy. What do you got for this? Yeah, he has done a, a good job. I was surprised by it because he was, he was coaching uh, Pee Wee Hockey, I think, the year before he got the GM job. But... Those facts you just gave us are pretty good. Um, I'm really excited for their season. As we said, we were in Chicklets Cup out there. 
we got to interview Akposo and he was ringing off names of all these guys and, and how good they looked. I'm really excited for them. And uh, I don't know if they'll make the playoffs this year, but they're going to be at least like manageable to watch after the last few years. You didn't even want to watch them. I hope they're fighting for a wild card, but if I'm Me buying too. stock, I'm buying Kevin Adams stock. I think he's on the rise. I think he's done a wonderful job and I'm really excited to see what he's put together with this Buffalo team. This is the first year that, you have to see some sort of of step in the right direction. I'd say that that I'd it's say very it's, similar to Ottawa. Yes, it, it's a failure if they're not at least in the mix and playing competitive hockey in the back half of the season. The one thing that they don't have is goaltending. Uh, they, they did draft this kid. Is it was it Levi? This kid that they yeah. had in camp. W- will he be eligible to play this year, or is this guy definitely going back to school? He's he's back at Northeastern, I believe, and okay. and, and and that's a part of the deal um, with Florida. Uh, what deal would have that been? Florida Buffalo deal. Who Ryan knows? Reinhardt. And Florida's Ryan Reinhardt. 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 It was the Reinhardt deal, and this kid, I mean, Holby Baker, kind of favorite, legit, could be a a superstar goalie. So, yeah, Biz, the Buffalo Sabers. I think I said after our trip there, like they're kind of my squad. I mean, I like Detroit a lot. I, I like I have a lot of favorite teams. I'm like Biz now. But <laughs> Buffalo, I think, is going to have an exciting ass team to watch. Very similar to the Senators. It's put up or shut up time a little bit in both cities. I think our boy Elio will be on their overs a lot. They seem like an over team. Not great oh, goaltending, yeah. like you said, but they got some weapons. Well, and and we when we talked to Oposo, and I, I don't know if it was Tuck who mentioned it too. It said the coach just like he he reinforces play with confidence make those plays he's not harping them every time they come off and they try something and they get something picked off so they're playing they're going to be playing some fun hockey and very loosey goosey we like that all right, uh, my neighbor Brad Marshan he had some interesting quotes about young captains in the league he said uh, quote it's almost unfair to be giving these young kids the captaincy at 20, 21, 22 because they don't have any idea what it's like to be a real captain in the NHL you're setting a kid up for failure by doing that. I thought it was an interesting quote. Not sure how accurate it was. I mean, you take a look at through young captains through the ages. Stevie Y got the captaincy at 21. Went on to become the longest serving captain in North American Major League Sports history. McDavid was the youngest ever at 19. Landeskog 19. Crosby at 19. Uh, LeCalvier got at 19, but the team ended up pulling it. Taves at 20. You guys had a young captain. Does it just depend on the guy if it's a superstar? What? Let's go to you first on this one, buddy. It depends a lot on the guy. Um, I don't think it's fair to kind of put everyone, you know, in the, in the same. Uh, I can't speak today. Holy shit. No, I can't wait. think of words. <laughs> I was going to say, but like even the guys who end up being extremely successful, like they have to go through their growing pains of being a leader too. Like even when Stid, you know, Sid went from, I want to say he was an assistant his first year. Yeah. He wore the A when Terrian came. I don't think he had it right away right away but then he ended up getting the assistancy and then when he got the captaincy i would say that like you know for part of that first year like he you know he would slam some doors sometimes and you know maybe did some things that a captain wouldn't do but you you gotta you gotta learn by doing and in most of these cases when these young young guys are getting it they're on that trajectory but i can understand where the pressure would mount and and, and it would it would with the pressure of not, not only worrying about how you got to develop your game and the asset you have as a player, but also controlling the group and understand where all the emotions are. And like, I saw a donor do it. Right. Whereas like, not only are you trying to be a leader on the ice, but you're also dealing with all these relationships and things going on off the ice too. So it, I could understand what he's saying. He's putting these guys in a difficult spot, but in some cases it's just like, well, who else were the fuck were they going to give, give it to when Sid was there? Right. And, he, uh, yeah. And also who's that next guy RA like asking us, or at least me, I came into the league 16 years ago. I've been out of the league for about eight years. So Sid, Sid getting the captaincy was so foreign at that time. It was so new and original to give it to that young of a player, the way the league is now that I haven't been around in so long and biz hasn't been around. It's like, I don't think it's as crazy only because these young guys get everything. <laughs> they get everything right away. They're the best players on the team right when they come in. They're given the big contracts after one or two years. So for them to get to see, it's not that su- surprising that it's all moving in that motion in terms of giving these younger guys more 
money, more responsibility, and more kind of issues to deal with themselves. So I think it is probably hard to get a big new contract and all of a sudden be the captain and deal with all this pressure being that young of a guy. But some of these guys are just ready for it. And, and Biz is right. Who else is going to get to see half of these instances? I think like, if you're looking at the Trubra approach, RA, where you know some fans might have liked to see Adam Fox get it, where it's like, let that guy just worry about the playing aspect where you give it to a guy who's been around a little bit more. He's been through some things, some ups and downs, and can really truly, from a, a grown-up perspective, understand how to, to, how to take adversity, but also not let it affect his emotions where the, it's rubbing off on the guys, and also stable enough to, to kind of help them deal with whatever the fuck that they got going on. So in some cases, it is unfair, but in, in others, it's like it's amazing how these – you know, 20, 21 year olds are so beyond their years. And we're going to get talking to Brady here. Like, you know, he doesn't slip up, but he's so well-spoken. He's got a guy like his old man who he can, he can bounce ideas off. Like, so he's got a, he's got a pretty good vetting process in, in his quarter. Yeah, we're lucky to have one of these young captains on with us today. We're going to get to him right now. But before we bring on Brady Kachuk, we want to let you know his interview is brought to you by Shopify. Shopify is the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Shopify offers online retail as a suite of services, including payments, marketing, shipping, and customer engagement tools. Connect with your customers, drive sales, manage your day-to-day. Shopify instantly lets you accept all major payment methods. Shopify has thousands of integrations and third-party apps, from on-demand printing to accounting to advanced chatbots and beyond. So go to shopify.com slash chicklets, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash chicklets right now. And now, enjoy Brady Kachuk. All right, it's time to bring on our guest who is about to become a member of the established three-timers club here on Chicklets. He's already headed to his fifth season in Ottawa where he'll cap in a young and hungry Senators club that made some big moves this summer. And if you needed a bear at the Saddle Dome last May, well, he was your guy. Thanks, much, thanks so much for returning once again to the Spit and Chicklets podcast, Brady Kachuk. How's it going, my friend? Doing great, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Did you uh, hear the chirp Jack Hughes threw you away? They asked him if he was going to root his brother on the playoffs. He's, I don't think you'll see me run up the stairs with eight beers in my pocket. So the boy's giving you shit for that or what? I don't know if that's a chirp or a compliment because I was just curious. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> just being economical, right? Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, love it. Yeah. Like, was, see the guy you want to hang out with? Yeah, that's him right there running yeah. up the stairs with the beers. Yeah. I, that was just for the first period. So. Well, right, right before you signed on, uh, or, or we started this, you said I'm gassed after today. So I think today is pretty much the testing day for all camps on ice. Correct. Yeah, no, it was, we did. We actually got the on ice out of the way, but oh, okay. we did ice today and just all that stuff. So that was, uh, it was a tough one today. It's to definitely be shut her down early for tomorrow. What's, what's your most dreaded, uh, event that you have to compete in or, or whatever you want to call it training, not yeah. drinking. Yeah, no. <laughs> half mile on the assault bike try to get that in under 49 seconds so that's not a fun one so that's the, that's the new wind gate is you got to go you got to go uh, a certain distance yeah like ha- we have to go half mile and do it in under 49 seconds so pretty much just a full out sprint the whole time which Hey, that's not, nauseous. that's not, that's not necessarily your game though. Like just get you in front of the net. You, 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 you probably still crushed it, but let's be, let's be serious. This isn't that important for me. This wind gate test. Yeah. Just helps with the, uh, with all the other things. Hey, pass that play with house money right now. Brady, there's a famous story. I think it's Ed Belfort. He got to Leafs camp one year and they're like, Hey, you got to do the bike test. And he looked at the guy, he goes, there's no bike in my crease. And he walked out and refused, refused to do the test. Hey, that takes jam. I don't got that jam right now. No, I, even after signing that deal you just got, I mean, I, I, I feel like uh, the, the way the financials are going, you pretty much own half the organization. You're like the new version of Mario. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not quite at that level, but uh, f- that's too funny, though. That's a good story. Well, between me, you and Matthew, you guys for sure at one point will own an NHL team. I mean, you guys are basically printing it right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what a deal that is. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, 
and all of it. He's got a golf cart now. So every time he comes out of the driveway, he's, he's got a video of him in the golf cart, get the speaker, <laughs> uh, the bucket hat on. I'm just like, you're out of control. That's Living awesome. that good Florida life. But um, we actually had to ask you guys, we were supposed to get a sandbagger going. At some point, this is going to happen. But numerous sources are all over your golf game. <laughs> it's absolute trash. I, I I just can you address this, please? Well, we had our golf tournament yesterday, our charity uh, for our team's charity, and just I don't know what it is. I'm awful, right? I'm like, just awful. It's just like at one point, like I'm I'm thinking to myself, I I treated this summer as a contract year. I'm like, all right, this is my make or break golf year. Like it's either I'm like, all right, I'm a player, or I'm just well, I like, might never play. Like this is like this is it. Like this is the best I'm gonna get. And at one point it was looking good, but she's let this last couple of rounds just completely just tore up the confidence in the golf game. Specifically the sw- your, your irons, your drive, your putting dog shit, short game. It's just, I don't even know. It's like I Ric Flair a couple, then I tug you wait. They're all over the map. I wish I, just, I knew I was like, all right, I'm tugging this one. I'll aim a little left, but it's just, I just don't know. Well, Brady, last time you were on, you gave us the legend of Jimmy Stew. Uh, I got to ask, though, does he bust your balls about having a higher AAV on the contract now that he got his new deal as well? He hasn't yet, but uh, now I know he's going to be paying for a couple more things. He was free 99 there for the, for a little bit. So now I'm looking forward to, to a couple free dinners there. I, I noticed the last three numbers in your deal, 714. Is there, is there a significance to that? I know sometimes players have fun with that stuff. No, no, there's no significance. I mean, I, I wish there was a backstory that I could just make up on the fly, but um, I guess just the most I can get. Hey, and <laughs> as the captain now, like most of the teams, you know, you get together as a group. Like, are you planning all this stuff now? I'm guessing you're probably getting a little help from Jeru now that he's there. He was captain for so long. But what's it like for you, the behind the scenes stuff with the team? Yeah, no, I think it's just everybody wants to hang out with one another now. It's like we did uh, uh, a couple – like we did a fantasy football draft as a, as a crew, which was a blast. We actually had Nick Holden's had uh, you know two of his kids had a birthday party, so the whole uh, the whole play, like our whole team went to his place and like bouncy castle. So it was just just a gong show with all the kids there and us guys just having fun. So it's uh, you know definitely plan a you know a couple things, but uh, it's that everybody just wants to hang with one another. So whatever we could come up with a birthday party or just. Sunday football, we're always trying to hang out with one another. Who's the responsible one? Who's like keeping all the accounting for everything that's going on? And is, is it a, a big time paid league? Like each guy buying in for big dough? It's, uh, yeah, it's, there, there's a good little prize that comes with winning. So any punishment um, to last place? Sorry. Just has to owe more money. So okay. it just keeps everybody involved. There's, I wish Biz it was like nightmare. The, yeah, I wish <laughs> <laughs> alligator arms. So. No, it's uh, <laughs> no, there's a, it's it's good. It keeps guys you know dialed in the whole year. Great, I've seen a couple of clips here the last few weeks. You look very excited, kind of giddy about the season coming up. Made all the moves I mentioned. A guy sort of looking around the room, or I'm not in the room yet, but like, hey, this is a playoff team. Looking around at who's on the team, this should be kind of a, a playoff level to reach right now. No. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, there's a lot of people talking about playoffs and a lot of the outside noise, kind of with when it comes to that, but. No, for us, we're we're ready for the next level. We're confident, but we don't want to add that extra pressure to ourselves. We just want to go out there and prove to everybody what we believe in. Were you already well acquainted with uh, Claude Giroux before he got up there? I actually, I, when he signed, you know, texted him a couple times, but got to know him. Uh, and we, you know, we golfed. I think it was like my the second day I was in town, so I got to know him on the golf course. And um, yeah, he's he's an unreal dude, and and. Uh, you know, we've gotten to be even closer with him as you know time's gone on since we've been both been back. So, um, yeah, no, he's. Uh, I'm excited for what the future holds with him and, and what I'm going to be able to learn from him. N- Norris is your your right hand man there, right? That's the guy you're hanging out with the most. Your your best friend on the team. Yeah, well, we go way back. We played together at the U.S. program and all all that stuff there. So I probably know him you now the longest, but I um, will say it was just there's a bunch of us that um, you know all of us being so young that you no. Know, we're always having fun with one another, you know, at home on the road. So we actually have a really good crew of guys. Who who would you say splurged the most on uh, their own, like their their signing gift? Because I heard yours was pretty modest. You bought yourself a lazy boy. 
and that was yeah it. And, I, and i actually never came in so i was pretty much bought myself <laughs> nothing so supply uh, chain man they don't care yeah, who you play yeah, for it was just it was just a donation to, to nothing i guess but uh Get some golf lessons with that money <laughs> I, that's I, that's messed up man i'm working yeah. on it yeah, yeah. but you gotta uh, get the simulator i know i refuse to i've go set the myself show. up to get dusted by you it's more of a moral thing I, I, i'm like i'm still not going to the range though i just will refuse to work on the game just it's going to figure itself out exactly but uh but i think what guys got themselves at cars and, and stuff like that and but uh i think the the one was probably like a g-wagon uh my boy batherson got so Ooh. that's probably the the gift that was probably the most split is he on. a single guy too no, he's got a girl, so okay. he he treated himself to a nice little car. That's a pussy wagon. Yeah, you think that's a oh yeah, th- th- g yeah, wagon. Yeah. That's a <laughs> I mean, Scottsdale man. You're, you're going, you you're going to the Via, Viagra Triangle in Scottsdale, oh, Old, Old Town. Town. Oh man, come on, that's a that's a that's a p wagon right there. Um, so. Kevin Hayes told me this summer because uh, I didn't know much about like Josh Norris. It was his second year, pretty much, and he didn't play the entire season, but. Kevin Hayes said he's, he's nasty. Like he was super impressed by his game. Cause when he signed his ticket, I asked him about him. So is it, is it true? It's that easy playing with him? Yeah. Well, he's just, he can fly and his shots unreal. I mean, I don't know how many games he played, but getting 35 goals. And I think it was like 50 something games. It was, it was nuts. And, and it's just, I feel like every time he shot the puck, it was going in. So, um, no, he's so easy to play with just the speed and what he creates. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, also pretty funny that we played together at the program we're playing together here so i think that's pretty pretty cool full circle that you know we both get to experience nice part of the carlson trade looking back now sorry all right i'll try yeah no it was uh, i saw that the other day it was like the four-year anniversary and i know that's i remember when it happened i'm like that's that was crazy when it happened it was my first day at camp i'm like what what am i getting myself into <laughs> it's like it's like everyone was talking about it, it was crazy Brady, we mentioned you got the C since the last time we chatted on here. And Brad Marchand had some recent comments about young captains in the league. Has it ever felt overwhelming for you at all being the captain? Any times you're like, oh, shit, you have to call dad just to get a little advice or something like that? Yeah, well, like you just said, I'm lucky to have, you know, my dad who was a former captain, who Matthew uh, and also Matthew is you know, leader of his team for the, in the last bunch of years. So I'm fortunate to be able to lean on those guys and, and also have, you know, friends across the league that are, um, captains too. I you know rely a lot on Mark Stone too. So um, I'm very fortunate to have you know, a lot of guys that I can lean on and ask for advice and what they do in that situation. And um, so yeah, I'm pretty lucky to be in that situation. Um, do you find the pressure to maybe like uh, in, in training to change things up, given the speed of the game, and it feels like every year it's getting faster and faster and faster. Like I know your game is more around the net and big bodied and physicality, power forward. But is there is there a change in balance in the training for that? No, I think Matthew and I have always done a pretty good job of you know doing you know strength a couple times a week, and then also doing speed and agility, you know, track, you know, turf workouts to to make sure we're, we're finding that extra gear. And, and each summer it feels like we're getting faster going into the season and feeling, you know, more in shape and, and can handle that extra gear and that extra stress that, you know, the body goes under. So I think that's something where, you know, we have implemented into our workouts and, and it, that uh, has really helped for both of us. Is it just you two alone? Do you have a trainer in the summer? Yeah. Yeah. We, we have okay. trainers uh, in the summer that, that we see. So it's, uh, it's usually just the two of us and, our younger sister tags along. Big Walt sometimes tags along to the to the, <laughs> the in gym stuff. So it's uh, usually a family affair when we're working out. Does he, oh he joins you? Walt joins in. Yeah, more on the uh, in gym strength stuff. It's just separately for Matthew and I and my sister for the the track and field stuff. So it's just bench uh, presses. Yeah, bench press, just the good old squats, the med ball toss. It's just fun to watch. And, and where are you spending most of your summer? Because I want to say you, what, we were potentially going to have a sandbagger, and that was going to be in Cape Cod. Yeah, so we, we spend most of the summer in St. Louis, but my parents bought a place a bunch of, year, bunch of years ago in Cape Cod on a golf course. So we we're going to do it actually before the, uh, the member guest as a warm-up round to you know, fix my swing. But um, <laughs> no, we're just going to do that. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get that sandbagger done next year. Is that the only course there? Whit? Weren't you saying there's only one course on that whole island? Or is Cape Cod not an island? No, no, no. There's a bunch of courses. It's not an island. It's just uh, it's like a, Maybe I was thinking like, in Nantucket. 
well, yeah, and there's like yeah. there's more than one over there. But we'll yeah, we'll get something done, no doubt. I gotta ask you though, because the story is a little long winded, so don't don't get frustrated with me as I try to explain this. But years ago, I'm talking maybe 2007, eight, um, if not whatever. I went to this bar down the Cape. I've never been there before, Trader Ed's. So oh I sh- I showed up. It was like three o'clock. Your dad was in there. He had a day for himself. He was there before me. We had the craziest night. I'm talking, I must have watched your dad have 37 beers sitting at this bar. And everyone told me that's his spot. That's Keith Kachuk's spot. Well, come to this summer. I run into people. They say, oh, when Maddie, <laughs> when Maddie and Brady are in town, they're crushing Trader Ed's. So you got to explain to me, like, is this always been a Kachuk family spot? So I guess taking it back to you know a couple of years ago. So we played in this golf tournament, just the member guests at our course there, the Ridge Club and in, in Cape Cod. And um, obviously you can't play until you're 21. So the big thing is you go to the Trader Ed's on Friday, Saturday night. So Friday night, it's, um, you know, of course, you have the, the big day the next day, but it's always been the tradition Friday, Saturday. And, and of course, it started with you know, my dad and his buddies at, uh, you no, know, a bunch of years ago. And then as we've gotten into the tournament, we go there and yeah, it's, it's just, you know, you got the ocean right there. You got a pool there and um, just this little like tiki hut of an inside. And then at the rest is, you know, seats outside patio. So yeah, um, there has been some good nights. It's been fun. Uh, I don't know if we can get too much of the stories out there, but um, yeah, it's, we're, we're taking over the uh, family tradition, I'd say. Well, that was the reason why you asked. Wait, didn't didn't Matthew say that something happened there this summer that you had to tell the story on the podcast? I heard somebody finally entered that pool, which it, the, for people who've never been there, there's this <laughs> pool biz. It's just sitting there. Nobody goes in the thing. Whoa. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I heard. Maybe my sources are, are, are incorrect. Yeah, usually when you hop in that pool, you get the boot right after. So um, <laughs> somehow there was a race this year and um, somebody put on a clinic, I guess. So. Uh, I don't know who exactly it was, but, um, yeah, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty funny. That was the one advice Drew gave him how to avoid getting put in cuffs. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, I, I like, this is off topic, but it just brings me back that video you have with him at where was at the, uh, Oh, oh so Jesus funny. Christ. That was, so that was, those are my heydays when uh, I got asked, uh, you know, what he was approach. like, he brought you, right? <laughs> or you brought him. I was his date. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a comp room ever... at the Cosmo, and then I think the NHL gave me one at uh, what was uh, well one of the one of the other nicer ones. I never even checked into it. I was at the other hotel the entire time, and and luckily I showed up to the red carpet with Giroux. I'm sure he was regretting it the minute I fucking showed up, though. <laughs> oh, big right at the airport, you, you must like, have been oh the God. wet republic that that day before. It oh. must have been a full. But it was, a, it was, it's pool club, pool club, pool club combo. Every donate, time. donate, donate. donate. <laughs> yeah. In between How, all of those, you're just <laughs> donating. Are, when you guys go on the road to the bigger cities, because I know Ottawa, you guys probably got to lay low, but like, are you guys going out and doing the, the big credit card table bottle service? Is that still the, is that still what the kids are doing? The, the day is coming around when we can. Yeah. We, we like to have fun, in our group, but, um, yeah, it's just, we just have a good, like we've just all of us are around, you know, same age, younger guys. So, and we all just love being around one another, but um, yeah, there's been some you know, fun times and some fun cities. And now we have a couple of days. We like to you now enjoy it and, and uh, experience what they have to offer. You were just in Vegas for your birthday. You turned 23 on a Friday night in Vegas, but you did the right thing. You took the plane home because the season's starting. I got to give you a pat on the back for that one, man. Not too wow. many guys your age do that. You get, she had a medal for that. Well, it was the longest 48 hours. So, um, those had, had to get out of there. I think everybody was getting out of there that day. So, um, yeah, no, it was uh, busy during the afternoon and we had buddies. I think we had a group of eight of us that you now we either played with growing up between Matthew and I, or, or, uh, um, just know as, as kids. So we, uh, we got to reconnect with a lot of old, you know, old friends and, and they're kind of right in the mix there with us. Happy birthday, by the way. Uh, we mentioned Matthew's going to be in the same division. Your father's probably going to be averaging 37 beers a game with the stress level. I mean, your brother's already smacked you in the nuts once. It's going to probably get intense. I was wondering, like, 
Is there a moment where you separate when the heat of battle, like this is just an opponent versus this is my older brother. Do you even have time to think about that or is it just instinctive? Yeah. It's like, it's tough because of course they're both rooting for each other every other game. So it's, it's an adjustment when we're playing each other, especially now that they're divisional games, it's going to be, it's going to be different. It's going to be difficult. Like you said, it's going to be stressful. I think mostly for my mom, I don't know what she's going to be able to do. And, and then eventually down the road, we're, we're most likely going to meet in the playoffs and eventually one of us will go home. So uh, I think when that, when that time comes and especially these games now, it's going to be, it's going to be weird because they're must win games. Uh, a little off topic, but is it true? Like teams aren't really playing credit card game anymore. When we went out to dinner, every meal credit card game, but then I talked to a couple guys on different squads. They say, nobody does it. Is that still in the repertoire for the senators? Out no to dinner? way in the Ottawa locker room. That's going. I I heard that story that you guys were talking about. I remember. You, I don't know when it was. And I, they did the fake credit card game, and you should have seen the group chat between my dad, <laughs> brother, and I. Just we were trying to figure out who it could have been, and it was just like this is absolutely like embarrassing almost. So there's always a credit card game at our table and somebody's wearing it no matter what. Yes. Yes. The, the Kachuk, I, I love that. Hey, the, the Kachuk best. family, Kachuk family commandments. It got engraved on, yeah, on one of the it, plaques. Oh, it's, it's probably number one. That's number one right there. The number two is no matter what you take, take care of the trainers because they're as important. Oh, too. That's, yeah. that's one and two right there. Your dad would be hanging out with the trainers more than he would his teammates. I've actually had like guys from other teams come up to me and say, you got to say hi to your daddy. He's the absolute best. I'm like, Oh, big shoes to fill there. If you have other teams, you know, medical staffs coming up to you. Does he stress that like crazy, especially with you being the captain? Like, Hey, you got to get the boys outside of the locker room, having fun, always vibing. Like, is that something that he's, he's constantly harping towards you? Yeah. I think, you know, with that and the, how, the tight group, I think that's, he's always emphasized on how important that is, but also with the trainers too, because they're every much a part of the team as the players are even more important. They're doing all the, the little things behind the scenes to make life easier for us. So I think for him, he's always been like, you take care of them, treat them you know, like family. Cause at the end of the day, they are your family at the rank and, and uh, in your life in all of us. So um, we always try to do, you know, not just the players, but, you know, our, our trainers and stuff do all together. Uh, we try to you know really do that a couple times a year to um, you know, have a good time and, and kind of share those memories with all of us. Uh, you had coach DJ Smith heading into his third season. Feels like he's going to be there for a little while longer, but you guys last year, obviously I probably bet you it's 42 games, but you guys never quit. I noticed that about you. What does he do to motivate you to keep you, keep you going when it's late in the season? You don't have t- a ton to play for. How does he keep you on the ball and like keep battling until the, the final whistle there? Yeah. Well, he's been a great coach for you know all of us. And for me, he has really helped me you now f- try to find new levels in my game. And yeah, I think for all of us, he, he, you no, know, not only pushes the right buttons, but just uh, you know, an awesome guy to play for. And I think that's what everybody's you know, mindset is in the locker room. That is uh, somebody that you, like you said, will go to the very end for and, and uh, will push to get to the next level for. What's the story, but your dad not throwing his hat when, when Calgary scored a hat trick, why wouldn't he chuck his hat on the ice? Was it, was he not jazzed up? I mean, he was cheering the entire time. You figured he was on the bandwagon. Yeah, no, he was fired up, but he just was like, that's one of his uh, best buddies bar in St. Louis, OB Clark's. And um, he was like, I just have too much loyalty to the hat. Can't get rid of it. I've got too much loyalty to, uh, that's a true friend. uh, And I was like, you know what? Good for you. Good for you. We, my mom was trying to get on. I'm like, throw your hat. Like, are you kidding me? Throw your hat. He's like, nope, <laughs> loyalty. How long were you there for? Like two weeks? Felt like a year. It was like, <laughs> well, it. we went to game four in Dallas. And then me and my fiance, we went to Napa for a vacation. And then all of a sudden they're game seven. We're like, we're going to game seven. And went there. And then Matthew's like, you're not leaving until – at least game two because we're going to head out there after game one and you know experience battle of alberta and head out he's like you're staying for game two and because he's like you're three and all right now you're staying i'm like uh, i'll stay for game two and then they lost i'm like matthew i don't care what you have to say i'm getting out of here i need to go home this is it this is done i'm done i'm done but it, That's it, it. It, it did get you a, a bud deal though the extended time so at least the trip was probably paid for 
Yeah, it's just I for some reason I kept calling myself the king of beers for that that little <laughs> vacation. To, no, it was, it was good. Matthew's like, I don't think I've ever seen somebody not playing but get all over TV in Canada. I was like, eh, I guess the king of beers gets it done. Mm-hmm. You're going to uh, be able to squeeze in a UVA field hockey game to check out the little sister, Taryn. She's been kicking ass in field hockey for a while now. Yeah, we actually went uh, – when was it? We went before, I think, Labor Day weekend. So uh, we went there, you know, had a little football game to go see that, and then got to see, I think, two games of her. So uh, always great going down there. That's just kind of a whole different beast of, you know, school down there and, and just seeing all that. And, um, no, it was great. It's always great seeing her and supporting her. And, um, no, I'm starting to become a fan of uh, field hockey too. So that's always fun watching her. She's kind of like Big Walt out there throwing the body around, eh? Oh yeah, she's she's physical. She gets in people's uh, people's grill too, and just pure offense. I don't think she goes past half. Just whenever <laughs> she touches it, she's getting she's getting a cookie. So uh, no, it's cookies. oh yeah, it's all about all about the pinto beans with her. No, it's uh, it's good though. She's uh, she's enjoying it, having fun and having a great experience still. Uh, you talked about the group chat on the team. You got a lot of young guys. What are you guys watching for shows? We get a lot of recommendations from RA for, for our TV and movie picks. What, do, what are the young bucks watching? Well, a lot of us are watching the uh, House of Fire right now. So that's been kind of a, a big hit. The new Game of Thrones little saga. So everybody's been watching that and been talking about that. But um, yeah, besides that, that's kind of all the shows we, we've been watching, like the new ones that are out right now. So um, yeah, that's what kind of guys have been talking about. You got to give Blackbird a whirl on Apple TV. Shit's real good. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I, I know I got downtime here soon after these tough baggers of a day. I well, saw, dude, we, we, you got any more for, the, yeah. for this guy, all right? Or? Another quick, I saw the video of you the other day that you didn't know what the floppy disc was or the disc was, which I get you're a young kid, but I was surprised you didn't know what a, what a VHS tape was. I figured the old man might have had one stashed from the old school days somewhere. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know, of course, like the name, but I remember seeing that growing up. I just... I th- at first, I thought it was a DVR that I thought to myself, that's just not even right. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I knew what it was, but I just couldn't figure out the figure out the word of it. Hey, I, uh, I, I want to let you know that this goon, uh, Wit, didn't, like, uh, take me to the pilot and think it was a banger. I know that you're a massive Elton John fan. Can you talk some sense into him? Yeah, I mean, that's – I don't know much about, you know, that, but, I mean, that's just – when you get in the feels, it's just – it's always a good tune when you, when you, get, when you get in the feels there. You never know. I like the guy's concert. That song, I don't know. It just doesn't exactly fire me up. But it, I, it doesn't. I was down with feels. the performance. Who? What, what are your favorite bangers from Elton? Who? Uh, I mean, just like the big ones: Rocket Man, Tiny Dancer, um, Benny and the Jets. I think is great. Uh, Crocodile Rock. Like just all like the big ones. Crocodile Rock you know, wasn't bad. Actually, you request those on the pregame mix. That's a morning for me. That's I don't. I wouldn't do that to guys. If I could listen to them all the time, but like that's more like in the gym. Just everyone's tired. Just throw that on. Throw on the fray. Just let everybody just get through the morning. <laughs> just get just getting a rolling session. Just listening to some Elton. Yes, the best that's life. What- Guess what? That's why they call it the blues biz. That's his best song. Yeah. Well, Brady, I know we know you're tired, buddy. You had a big day of, uh, of testing. We wish you guys luck. There's a lot of intes- anticipation around this Senators team. So don't let us down, man. No, I appreciate it. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch this year. Good luck, buddy. Thanks for joining. Pesky sense. Thanks for having me guys. Huge thanks to Brady for jumping on with us once again. Great kid. Want to let you know that his interview was also brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Did you know there are currently over 2.4 million podcasts in the world, including the one you're listening to right now? And it takes a team of people to help bring these podcasts together. The audio engineer, the editor, producer, guy who puts the whole show together. Needless to say, hiring the right people for these roles is important. Whether you're hiring for a podcast or for your growing business, there's only one place that makes it easy. ZipRecruiter. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Additionally, ZipRecruiter has a complete suite of tools that make it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. 
So if you're a fan of this podcast and you want to try ZipRecruiter for free today, you need to remember our special URL, ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash SC. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, Biz, before we cut off there to talk to Brady, we were talking about young captains around the league. I mentioned Stevie Y got it, kept it for good, but not everyone got to, kept, got to keep it. I mean, Mike Madano had it, had to give it up to Brendan Morrow later. Joe, Mar- Joe Thornton had it, had to give it up. But Brady's father himself, I was looking for him on this list. He got it when he oh, was two- no. 21. Sorry, Walt, but it's history. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I don't blame him for doing it at the time. It was, I want to say, 93. He was, you know playing for Winnipeg and he was restricted free agent and Chicago signed him to an offer sheet. Like, cause Winnipeg was in financial dire straits and Hey, fuck it. I want to go to a major city. He signed the offer sheet with Chicago was going to up his salary. And he didn't think he probably didn't think Winnipeg was going to match it, but they did. Uh, And then when they matched it, they fucking pulled the C right off. Like, (laughs) see you later. You're not the captain anymore. That is a great story. So he was like, I don't give a fuck as long as you're buying the box. You signed, you signed the offer sheet. You you matched it, right? They're like, yeah, it's like, okay, cool. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So they did end up giving it to him back later though. But I think it was just, they were pissed off. That's petty as shit, man. Let the guy know. Like if you're going to, if you're going to match it, why strip him of the C? You, You know what I mean? Like, oh, we, we want you on the team still, but we don't think you're as important as we once did. Yeah, I, I, it was just probably disciplinary. I think they made Chris King the captain for a little while in Winnipeg. And like I said, he did get it back. But that's an example of a unique way of getting the C pulled, signing an off a sheet with the Chicago Blackhawks. Is I- no, that's a good – I mean, that's a great segue out of that interview. And, hey, shout out to Brady. Like, not only are those media days a mental grind, but he was doing fitness testing too. So the fact that he even came on and didn't tell us to fuck off and we got to throw him and Zegris – two of these young, bright studs in the league to come on and shoot the shit. Awesome. And we talk about these young guys growing up before our eyes. He didn't even fucking go into the story about him jumping into this pond in front of this restaurant and getting the boot. Like, what what happened here? I have no idea. Yeah, oh, I fuck off. Oh, you guys I, I, probably no, know I the didn't, story. I, I have no didn't clue, get the dude. Deets. I didn't you, what are you beats. talking about? You told us we had to ask him after you talked to Matthew. No, that was Grinelli who told me to tell oh, us. Oh, so fuck G, what happened? I don't know the full story. He just said you have to ask about Trader Ed's. And if if you're getting kicked out of Trader Ed's, it's really for one reason, and that's for The John one night I was telling him about Trader Ed's. Uh, Is one this night like was, the, the I had, redheaded step trial of, of Trader Joe's or what? No, it's a bar and like a scene. It's not some ghetto it's ass incredible. fucking grocery store that you can buy like <laughs> wheat and fake honey nut Cheerios at. Oh, you're gonna have some granolas oh, coming oh, after oh, you. Buddy. I you're think Trader done. Joe's sucks. I think it sucks. <laughs> I agree with you, Wit. Team. Whole uh, there was one in the San Antonio. Like this place blows. I I hated it. <laughs> it's like just ghetto ass versions of good stuff. Oh um, God. At that Trader Ed place, though, the one night I was there that I was telling him about, I had like $1,200 Canadian on me, and I was like, oh, I'm never going to need this again. And I was just literally chucking it around. I was making it <laughs> rain Canadian money. And some kid's like, dude, I'm grabbing all this. This idiot doesn't know. It's just like 800 America. Just go to the bank. I was, <laughs> degenerate move by me. But I do remember Trader Ed's for just letting the loonies and toonies fly wild. Oh, you, oh, you were gassing it. I thought I was you just were throwing around Canadian money. You oh, do you you would throw money up, like just like chucking Canadian. Like you were at a strip club, but at a bar. Yeah, did nothing for me. Either. <laughs> Look, at, still Grinelli, you're laughing too, buddy. That's hey. How many more times did you even do that with American dollars during your? I day? never did it with American dollars. I treated Canadian <laughs> dollars like it was Monopoly money. I was just firing it around. <laughs> Well, hey, it's becoming more and more like Monopoly money. I think it hit 138 today. One U.S. dollar gets you one. You should buy some property over here in Canada and run for prime minister with. No, thanks. Uh (laughs) If you guys want to invest, come on and send your money to Sweden. You're getting 11 kronas per dollar right now. Well, everything's got to be alcohol with you, eh, Merle? How much is an ounce of weed? How many kronas is an ounce of weed? No, when I, no, Krona's, measured... Krona's the money biz, not the booze. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I thought right. Biz was kidding. <laughs> so when I played here, it was six Kronas to a dollar. Now it's 11. So it's it's that's unreal. A, so every, everything bucket. for me is cheap if I run my U.S. card. It's great. Holy shit. Hey, what's, no a, what's a, what's a, what's a, like an apple at the grocery store cost? What's a can of Coke cost? Uh, an apple is like a buck, a buck an apple, but I couldn't tell you how much they cost in the U S but I know they're a dollar here at the granny Smith ones. 
In so, Nantucket, there was a pair, six dollars, six dollars uh, for a uh, fucking pair. Yeah. For, uh, we're having uh, huge inflation for one here. pair. Yeah, almost Nantucket, cute. Though, bought first, twenty of them. The first time I went to Canada, biz, <laughs> I, I, it was you actually. Was, like hey, hey, bought twenty of them just so they could rot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wits, I bought the whole fuck. I bought the whole fruit aisle. You bought a pear farm over I there. I threw it in the Escalade, and I, and, I, and I went and doubled my money on the side of the highway. That's how I spent my Saturday in Nantucket. And then I fucking kidnapped Fudge Kid, and I'm fucking torturing him in my garage. Fudge good, Pulling fudge. his fingernails out as oh. I feed him old fudge covered hey, in Hey, if pears. there was one person that you could torture on the planet, would it be Fudge Kid? Oh, it might be Brett Favre, though. That piece of shit. Oh, oh good. He has answer. a grinded. This, I think, I'm I think, assuming that was your grind. My R. gears, R.A.? Hand yeah, it over to R.A. right now. I think everybody's gears are grinded by this, but uh, this is just fucking despicable shit. Like, Mississippi, if it's not the the poorest state in the union, it's one of the two, three, two or three fucking poorest states in the union. Brett Favre was involved with a conspiracy with the guy who was in charge of giving out welfare money to the state's poorest people. This is money set aside for poor, for poor folks. And, you know, my experience with poor people, most poor people don't want to be poor. They're born into it. They're trying to get out of it. It's not an easy thing to do. Well, Brett Favre made hundreds of millions of dollars playing football endorsements. Well, he has he's involved with a conspiracy with politicians there where they were siphoning money set aside for poor kids to feed poor kids or help them get housing, whatever. And he was siphoning it to build a volleyball court at his him and his daughter's college. They went to the same college. Like, what the fuck? Seven million dollars to build a volleyball court. And his daughter's on the team. And I guess she was like there because of her last name. She's the only girl from the state on the team. He also like texted like no one's going to find out about this. Right. Like they got him dead to right. So the guy who like the main conspirator, he got like 50 years away. He's going to testify against these other people. So Brett Favre is probably shitting his pants a little bit. Right he now should go to prison, right? He, he Honestly, yeah. I mean, this is this is like government fraud taking money again from fucking earmark for poor people to build a fucking volleyball court for a college that has nothing to do with anything. They just they've probably been getting away with it for years. Um, here's the other thing too: tech show five worried about being caught by the media also wanted to use unpaid prison labor to build the volleyball lockers. So not Good. only do you want to like steal this money, you want to get fucking prisoners to come in. And that's a big thing down South. They, they're, they're all privatized, which is fucking sick. They, prison should be run by the fucking They're state probably the all in there for selling weed too. It, oh, that too. So he wants, Oh, we want unpaid labor to do it to boot. And, and what's even worse is they also funny money. Remember the old wrestler, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, they funneled money to his son, Brett, this kid went to rehab in Malibu. $160,000 they paid for his rehab. They gave him a $250,000 job he wasn't qualified for. $48,000 to teach employees how to identify possible drug use by people seeking help. So, like, this guy is in rehab. Now he's going to teach people to look for drug signs. And they gave him, like, eight grand for a fancy hotel room. These people are scumbags, literally stealing from the poor. And now they're probably going to all flip over each other. And hopefully five million gets charged. But, yeah, he deserves jail time for this man. This is millions and millions of dollars set aside for the most poor, vulnerable people in this state. And that's why these states are fucked up. You know, they're the, the lowest in education. They're the lowest in poor. And this is generations of it because of scumbag politicians and people drifters like this stealing their money to build fucking volleyball courts like that the school should be building itself it's disgusting reading it man i get fucking annoyed reading it just bad people bad fucking shady people if you steal money from poor people you're a fucking scumbag that's a <laughs> you know, great all oh, right man that's a fucking mic dropper right there <laughs> well said all right an absolute disgrace disgrace an absolute idiot by the way and an asshole and it goes back to the pictures he said before just not a oh, smart man too. not a smart man uh a man of no morals and and the seven deadly sins right you got lust gluttony sloth wrath envy pride and the other one greed, greed. and greed is such an, a disgusting despicable thing that can not only ruin your own life, but it can ruin so many other people's lives. And and Brett Favre truly does not give a fuck about anyone except for himself. Like the, the fact that this story came out in the way it did, you're reading it and like, holy shit, like you're not even stealing from people who maybe don't need the money. These people truly were relying on what you're taking from them. It's it's disgusting. I hope he goes to prison. And if that, that guy got 50 years, the main conspirator? Well, he, he got like, I think it was a 90th sentence. They suspended 50 of it. He's looking at like 32 Holy years. The, wasn't the, the governor year. involved as well? 
Yeah, there's yeah, a whole bunch of politicians. Name the, that's who they were going to name the building after. Jeez. Yeah, the director of welfare, John Davis, pleaded guilty to his part in the conspiracy that saw money put aside for the poorest state's neediest residents instead go to grifters like Fav. He also got paid Fav for speeches he never even gave. It's just like this guy fucking is popular. He has all the money. Even if he blew it, well, fuck it. That's his fault. Why are they doing this? Like, I don't understand why people like to suck celebrities' dicks to this extent where they just give them money for what? Like, obviously a favor down the line, but I don't know. It's, it's brutal, dude. Now people it's want brutal. to kicked out of the Hall of Fame. That's probably not going to happen. I don't give a fuck if it does or it doesn't. It's just they're going to hang this legacy on him more than anything. So. Oh, um, uh, brutal. Speaking of greed. volleyball court, <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, no shit, dude. yeah. Holy Your daughter's shit. probably not even any good. She's fucking <laughs> no. barely on the team. You're trying it's to get him a court. Like, Who cares? Like, like a you're fucking... not Teddy Purcell's future wife winning <laughs> gold medals. You're fucking scrubbing around <laughs> Mississippi State or whatever shitbag school the guy went yeah. to. Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna have sweat shops to to make the knee guards. Speaking of greed, I watched a very old documentary that somebody recommended to me, but holy shit, was it good. It's called The Smartest Guys in the Room, and I believe it's from 2004, all on how the the company Enron went bankrupt and all how it fell apart. Oh, my God, the greed. The greed is disgusting. What's Enron? Enron was a energy. um, How do I describe it? All right. I'm. I watched the the doc so long ago. They were, uh, I don't another grifter company. I don't know if it was almost like a fake company designed to fucking. It, it was a complete scam. The entire thing. But these guys, biz, when they were made, there's 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 fit. So they were behind all these blackouts in California. They were basically uh, behind the governor getting recalled, and Arnold Schwarzenegger ended up coming in to be the governor because during all these like blackouts, they were basically causing them, and they were costing people. Get to the them. chopper. They were costing people in California. Like millions and millions of dollars. And there's these guys are on the phone laughing, literally laughing at the fact that people's lives are being ruined by and companies and businesses. It's just like the ultimate case of true scumbags and greedy assholes in life. And it's 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 a really it's old, like it feels like it's like 40 years old, just being 2004 or whatever. So, they, they, it, so they were somehow like uh disconnected. Dude, they were shutting off the power. They were calling the plants in California, shut it off, because they were then driving the price of like energy up. It was it, it's, I'm telling you, you would actually enjoy this. It's fucking wild what these people did. The company was valued at seventy billion dollars, and then boom, one day it, it was just it bankrupt. It, and it's fucking amazing to Holy see what greed shit. can do to people. Oh, it's and it seems like more more than ever. There's more grifters. I know there's always people out trying to beat the government, but it seems like there's a lot more people within the government trying to fucking beat the government. Like Minnesota just had COVID so, relief money. People stay on COVID relief money. It's like, like your your job is to get put this money out. Instead, they're stealing it and buying fucking. Cause shit they don't need vacations, cars, whatever. They're already making money. Oh, they already amazing. got a good paying job and they're stealing it. Let Fucking me ask scumbags. You this one, all right. scumbags. I think I was talking to somebody um, the other day. Might have been t- uh, Tim Bussy Martin. Remember we had him on the podcast? Yeah. Uh-huh. He lives here in Victoria. So I golfed with him and, uh, and Mike Gillis, the GM of the Vancouver Canucks. Fuck, because he got stories for days. He's a funny bastard. Um, but he was saying, I think that the offer to Bobby Orr was 18% of the Bruins. You might have already said the actual number. Oh, last I thought it was podcast. like 5%. He, well, it, it's bussy too. So he might have fucked, you know, he catches fishes this big, but there's a little big, salt right? and pepper on yeah, it. It's like, hey, that ain't the whip six move. In- That's hey, the whip that, move. Hey, What's that, that ain't six spice inches, bussy. I got salt. I got salt that'll fucking, I'll drown you in salt with my What's salt. The, pepper, uh, what's so the emerald of spitting chicklets? Bam. <laughs> but so I guess that the relationship between the owner or the owner's son of the Bruins at that. Why are you guys still laughing? Did I miss something? Did no, something no, over you're my crushing head? it. Oh, <laughs> um, but the relationship was really good between Bobby Orr and either the owner. And, and he saw him as a son and the owner couldn't understand why Bobby Orr w- didn't like the deal. But he Alan Eagleson never presented that side of it. So it drove him apart. That was what ended up happening. We're like, fuck, dude, if they would have just sat down in a room together and fucking hammered it out. That's my gears are going to overheat right now. Biz. It, it, <laughs> I know. But, but to the to the point where they were actually in the same room in the same vicinity when this offer was on the table. Like, like fuck, you almost wish you just go back in time and just say, get in the room and have a fucking conversation. 18 percent of the Boston Bruins, dude. How much would he be worth right now? Oh, God, I 
He must fucking know. punch a fucking. He must punch the door every fucking goddamn day. You know what? I I watched that new Elvis movie, uh, the one with Austin Butler, and I thought there were similar shades, as weird as this might sound, between like Elvis and Colonel Tom and Bobby Orr and Alan Eagleson. We have this guy manipulating this guy who's maybe I don't know if he's naive or just oh, trust this guy too much and he's just listening to this guy over and over and he doesn't have the maybe career that he should have Elvis never taught outside of America all he ever did was listen to that scumbag Colonel Tom and I was like wow this sort of does remind me of Bobby or this super duper star who's all he has to do is maybe ask one other person about it and he just trust this guy too much and he's getting screwed as a result what's up G Oh, I was going to say that I, when I was watching that RA, I saw that I thought the same exact thing, that that guy was just the biggest scumbag in the world and just like ruined Elvis's career. No, yeah. I, I still haven't seen the movie. I, I don't really know the whole story. I just knew that he was obviously a legend and like all these people like dress up in costumes and fucking head to Vegas and impersonate him. It's fucking insane, man. <laughs> well, what's good about it is and they actually changed the title. It was supposed to be Elvis in whatever name they were calling Colonel Tom. But like it, it shows like, yeah, the Colonel Tom was the string puller. And Elvis, like I said, I think he was kind of a na- naive kid from Memphis and didn't ask a lot of questions. And, you know, by the time he started asking questions, Tom, Colonel Tom owned like half of everything. He was getting a cut of everything. Like he said, he, he told him, oh, you don't want to tour around the world security, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, you're fucking Elvis. You can go in anywhere in the fucking solar system. And you just like kind of felt bad for him at the end. Um, what's crazy too, the last scene that, that they use when he's like kind of old and fat, and like he's sweaty. It's like one of his very last concerts and he sings Unchained Melody. And it's so sad because he's just he's like about to die in a few weeks and he's sweaty, but he still is Elvis. He still hits these couple notes where you give you goosebumps because I actually tweeted the video a few times. Like it's the same one they use in the movie. And it's it's a good flick. Definitely check it out. They give a a little more perspective on the Colonel Tom stuff. So definitely worth the watch. He, He performed all the way up until two weeks before he died. Yeah. Yeah. He was on tour. June, June, July, 77, and then um, went home, and then he died a few weeks after, yeah. Oh, my God. But uh, The other thing, too, on e- it's on HBO Max. They have a couple of his old concert movies from, like, 1970, so it's, like, post-peak Elvis, not when he was young in the 50s and 60s, but before he was, like, totally, like, I guess a slob and sweaty. You could see the cracks in the foundation, but they're documentaries, and you get, like, a fly-on-the-wall look at Elvis. Like, he still drove his own car. He had a fucking pistol in his boot. He was just this kind of good old boy. So if you like Elvis, it's a real good look at him, the certain era that you don't really hear too much about, the early 70s. Was he just how about when girl, was he how about when crushing he was crushing everything? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. yeah. He was shaking his knees, and girls were, like, choking themselves <laughs> yeah. out, rubbing their – it was like, dude, the guy was like – he literally moved his hips and girls were squirting all over the stage. <laughs> he, he would walk right through the crowd yeah, yeah, he, themselves screaming. The like I, I the last time I seen I've seen girls scream like at artists like that was probably Michael Jackson. They would faint, they would scream. You would check his cup in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like he he was there was nobody like Elvis, man. It was just one of a kind. He would walk through the crowd, kissing every girl in the crowd and stuff. It was so like I'll tweet the, the titles out because there's some of the old <laughs> shitty Elvis movies where he acted, but he wasn't good. But there are a couple of their concert films and they're sort of documentaries. Those are the ones you want to watch because it's sort of Elvis in his natural habitat. But uh, check he them was out, a but... handsome bastard. Oh, holy oh, shit, dude. Yeah. Pictures was, of a young Elvis. He like, was yeah. a what? weapon. He was. He a, was. Hey, I bet, I bet you this. Well, who's the guy who played him? I mean, he must be doing Austin right for himself. Who's he dating? For well, who isn't? Who isn't? He He's a fucking him. rocket launcher. Uh, hey, so, imagine getting the residual. Imagine that name? was your imagine that was your centerman when you played Merle's. <laughs> even Butler. you'd get a cup, even in your drunken stupor. After, <laughs> Winning 700 at the craps table. Oh, yeah. This Austin like, oh, Butler. Oh, yeah. Right. This Austin Butler looks decent. Yeah. Good looking guy. Jeez, well, another weapon. Um, the only other sports really going on the weekend uh, with, I know, the President's Cup golf. I know it's not the Ryder Cup, but did you ever check any of it out? How was it? Any good? Uh, watched it briefly. It, it, uh, internationals did well on um, Saturday afternoon, I believe, in the, in the four ball segment. It, it, it's time for like an overhaul of the president's cup though. And, and, and the international team got hosed when they lost Smith and, and Neiman and a couple other guys um, to live golf. But I mean, the Americans also are missing DJ and stuff. So it's like, it's just such a shit kicking. I think the U S is 12, one and one in the last 14 president's cups. I I've seen people mention that you make it a mixed event in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the top six American men, the top six American women versus the top six international men, top six international women, because the, the Korean women, they fucking dominate. They they crush everyone. 
So that could maybe make it a little more interesting. Like I saw some people dogging it. I, I don't hate that idea. All of a sudden you get some, you get, you get some mix matches. You get the girls on girls match, relax, bitch, <laughs> and then you basically can somewhat try to make it more competitive because I'm right in. now it's a snoozer. I'm it's an I'm absolute I'm, I'm live snooze streaming fest. it. I got the tablet out. I got the, fucking, I got the fucking business. Like just, 32, I just want to see 32 see inch desktop all out of the cup. Mm-hmm. Now, um, there was something about a gimme there. Wait, do they allow? Do they actually allow gimmies in tournaments or, or uh, that- match play situations only? So okay. the match play event in Austin every year, and the Ryder Cup and the and the uh, your Presidents Cup, you can you can give a putt. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I know um, the and, guy, and I, sandbaggers. Yeah, but just see, Wu Kim didn't want to give um, what's what's it? Uh, Justin is to- Justin Thomas. Thomas. Right? He didn't want to give it to him, and I'm like, well. Yeah, I don't fucking blame you because someone missed the gimme later in the later in the tournament. It's like, well, yeah, that had to take. So I don't. Well, know. there's always there's always a the, it's a fine line. Like usually in golf, early in the match, you might give a putt that in this later in the match, there's no chance you would. There's some people who are very stingy in terms of giving putts. Um, there's the thought process that if you don't give somebody a putt and then they make a couple of those, all of a sudden you're pissing them off and and they're making the putts and that kind of drives them. So okay. there's an entire mental game. I get it. A match play golf. I get it. Why didn't the live tour get John Daly or did they? I think he's just like Funny. they're looking it's at they're looking to have 48 anyway. of the top golfers in the world. He's on the senior tour now and stuff. It's just. Buddy, he's a little old. You're trying to get the live streams popping. You want? Oh, no, I know. I know. Have him out crowd? there like. Just doing lines of blow off shotgun of and beers out of his belly. Yeah. This this round is sponsored by Diet Coke and Stickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we're gonna wrap up short. Get a lady to, to to knit a sweater out of all the lint that's in his belly button each round. Merles, you got a play of the week for the for the crew, right? You're gonna share yes. with us now or what? Let's get it. Yes. And I will give you a line from a guy named Thomas Bertram Lance. If Fake it's man. not if it's not broke. Don't fix it. So play of the month hit with Timmer IK. Play of the week, Timmer IK on Thursday. Be nine. No, it's going to be a 7 p.m. game here. 1 p.m. your guys' time in New York and Boston versus HV71. Timmer money line, minus 120. Let's Boots will go. be on the ground. Place will be rocking. Book it. Sports Home book. Game. Barstool sports book. Home game, why the advantage? The home ice is does the, the the home team usually always win the first game? Tough, tough travel in this league. So I know um, you know, you're usually on the bus and HV is probably eight, ten hour bus ride. Oh. They're gonna play they're gonna play Tuesday at home, wake up Wednesday, have to bus up here most likely, and then have to have Timra sitting here waiting. Timra lost on the weekend. Oh fucking they're gonna be they're gonna Lions be ready. Down. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna have my press pass. <laughs> Love my it. hat Love on it. so there that, it is going in the lion's den guaranteed yep. to let's go merles hey keep hey keep up the hot streak all the chicklets fans the barstool sports book fans we thank you ebr is alive and well we can't wait for nhl to get going you're cool. the man buddy yep can't wait we got some nhl preseason you can make some money on it you got to look at the lineups though you never know what team these guys are sending to their road games so keep we an eye on the games on the barstool sports book the, the preseason uh, Yep. Nice. Yep. With to 100K this year. Let's go. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> One last story here, boys. Uh, we want to send a huge shout out uh, to Puerto Rico, who won the Amerigo Latam Cup when they beat Argentina 4-3 to in Coral Springs last week after losing their two previous games to Argentina. Uh, and these guys were playing with a lot of their minds as Hurricane, Hurricane Fiona ravaged their whole island home in Puerto Rico. Uh, a lot of team veterans battled through injuries just to play for their flag. So huge congrats to Puerto Rico for the championship. Very well deserved. Uh, and the five-day journey, it's getting bigger and bigger every year. We talk about hockey being for everybody, so we wanted to share this story. Uh, the tournament drew 44 teams in six divisions, totaling over 750 players from 21 countries and territories from Latin America, the Caribbean, and the Middle East. In their D2 tourney, Egypt's pharaohs beat the Stars of Israel 3 to nothing, and their captain, Samar Ramadan, said Egypt came to make a splash in a statement. His quote, there's a lot of Egyptians that play at a high level. We need an ice rink as soon as possible. This absolutely helps. This is the platform that we need. We went at teams at our same level from around the world and ultimately came on top. And their coach, uh, Yasar Ahmed, said the win means everything for everything. A win like this puts the spotlight on us, even for a little bit, just to show there are Egyptians who play ice hockey, and ice hockey is for everyone. 
guys, just reading this article and all these places that are putting teams together and fall in love with hockey and the warm climates. We know it works in warm climates from here, here in the state. So these places need rinks. So uh, anybody out there who's listening, who can help these guys maybe facilitate getting rinks or equipment or whatever they need, l- pr- please help them out if we can. We could sort of push this agenda a little bit more, but it's just great to see in hockey. Hockey in places, Biz, you don't typically see it. Uh, the sport's growing, and it's great to see it grow on this level, Biz. Oh, it's awesome. No, it's such a great story. Thanks for bringing it to the pod, all right? Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully these guys guys and gals get more rinks. Well, again, traditionally, rinks have not been, but they used to not be in Florida and South Carolina and California oh, and Arizona. So there's no reason they can't be in Egypt, the Middle East, Colombia, wherever. So, again, congrats to Puerto Rico. Glad everybody yeah, had fun at the tournament. Amazing. And uh, good luck to everybody moving forward with, with the uh, Amerigo Latsam Cup or whatever league you're playing in. So, once again, hockey is for everyone. We love to hear it. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Well, before we go, I mean, there's one crazy story we didn't mention, and it was oh. a shot that Daryl Sutter took at oh. uh, Matthew Kachuk. I mean, oh, I, know, I, I know, saw that. I know there's no captain for the Flames, but I think Daryl should get it for fucking comedy routine. That guy. Imagine a C every yuck, yuck. into the suit. Just here, let me play the audio, boys. Oh, come on! How do we even forget this? As far as their skill sets, any comparisons between Kachuk and Toffoli? Uh, one guy's won Stanley Cups. Been a big part of long playoff runs. Wow. Daryl is out for blood already. A little spice. You talked about the salt and pepper earlier, Wit. Well, how about that spice for the NHL preseason, baby? That's what we want here at Chicklets. We want this league thriving and the fucking drama. We're going to get all the drama from the Swedish league with Merle's on the on the wagon this year. We're going to make some up if there isn't any. Yeah, just creating <laughs> rumors. So thank you to all you Chicklets fans who watch the Sandbagger on the YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And remember, look out for that Pink Whitney vlog uh, dropping Wednesday, probably around 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we love you guys. Love you guys. Peace.